Marauder. <laughs> you stupid bastard. This just in, 75% of Milk Crate Marauder's listeners are not subscribed. Uh-huh. Subscribe to the channel, you funky bastards. How about smashing that subscribe button? Before I crack you a good one... Cocksucker! Milk Crate Marauder. You know who wants you know he's here? He's here early. He wants to meet you. You know Tracy Morgan from 30 Rock? You know, yeah. he's here. Can he meet you? Yeah. Uh, Tracy, come on in and meet her. He's he's going out there. He's going berserk. I'm getting really? out through this whole interview. Yes. He must be a big fan. Do you do interracial scenes at all? Not on film. Right. I haven't done any yet. Uh, hey, Tracy, you want to meet Riley? I heard you want to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey. Hello. <laughs> easy, easy. Like a candy shop in here. Give him some headphones. Hey, hey. hey. What do you say, Tracy? Hey. Tracy in a big new hit movie. Hi. Well, it hasn't become a hit yet. It has to open. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you just say? I got a hit movie coming out. Yeah. What are you trying to you hitting on her? Yeah, already. <laughs> 20 bucks, I'll get you pregnant. <laughs> you believe extra that? five bucks, I, I induce the labor. Do guys? And for extra 15, I bring your period down. Do you do guys offer you money all the time for sex? I would. Have, is she not the most beautiful porn star you've ever seen in your life? God damn. Yeah. Do so guys, if me and you was in a porn star, we if we was in a porn movie, we could just do it right here, mm -hmm. with people looking and everything, like a, somebody holding a boom over and all that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can you get so you number? gag on purpose? Sometimes. You, not always. Wow. Awesome stuff, man. Yeah, this is pretty hot. Toes look like Skittles, too, man. That's the thing. Let me when see. you hear the doggy style and they dig their feet into the couch or the bed. Oh, yeah. I love that because, dudes, we look at everything. Like, when I when I masturbate yeah. and I look at porno, yeah. I'm not just looking at the two individuals on the bed. I'm looking at the clock on the wall, you know, the sheets being pulled. It's everything that makes the whole moment. You taking the whole experience. One thing yeah. I will say about Riley, I don't know if you've seen Riley's films. They're very um, uh high quality is that the right word to say yeah. riley yes see that's Good not job, my thing well, man not grainy and that's not my thing i'm a i'm a i'm a douchebag man well I, then you should I don't look like my website too, I, yeah it's very grainy yeah yeah it's, grainy. it's me just like masturbation like yeah. very <laughs> Yo, you see how she did the masturbation like the the, the dildo was big huge now you were saying you've never done a black eye in, on film maybe in your personal life but I, not i've never actually done it i Misspoke. I never did it. I haven't had sex with a black man. You've never had no. sex with a black man. Uh -uh. Is the black man a better lover, Tracy? You asking me? I don't know. I ain't done you, never you, never made, made, you never made love to any black man? I ain't never made I love to no black did. man. I don't know. I know. I get down for my crown. Uh, I can't speak for no black dude. Ain't no black dude ever went up in me, man. Well, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, Riley was telling us a uh, beautiful, beautiful story about how uh, she used to blow. She used to babysit. At 15, she was blowing the guy she babysat for. Isn't that something? That is hot. You are just hot. Look at the lips. Jesus, I'm just, I'm just looking at you because you're, you, you're like a porn star, and I see it in your eyes, man. You you'll probably, look? you'll probably break me. What do you mean? You you'll break me. I know you would. I'll probably get sprung. I'll get sprung. You probably have me open like a research monkey. <laughs> You're, uh, you're, uh, but aren't you in a, in a deep loving relationship? I was reading your that article. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Ah, there no was... monkey stop. No one, no one monkey stop no shows here. Wait a second. I'm laying the dick down. If she give me some, she put it in my face. I'm eating the butthole and everything, man. I just heard that, uh, <laughs> does that turn you on? That he would eat your butthole? Yeah, I'll stick I like my tongue butthole. in the crack of your ass. Hard. Do, do guys? Spit on it. Oh, man. I would want you to spit Fire. on my cock like you hate it. Yeah. Call it a racial appetite. Had uh, Riley, do you do that? Do you put your tongue in a guy's ass if he's really? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Good lord, that is wonderful. <laughs> See what I'm saying? No, Riley, no, no, there is a Santa Claus. Riley, why? <laughs> there is a Santa Claus. Riley, why don't girls ever put their tongue in my ass? I'm a famous guy. I'm not. I mean, okay, I'm not that hot, but okay, I'm not horrible. I mean, yes, why? Why is it? You are horrible. I am horrible. No, you're hot. Right. Oh, thank you. Howard, you, don't, you, you don't. You don't like that stuff, what, man. The tongue in you my ass. Respect women too much. I think man. I would like it. I mean, too much. There's no too much. I feel, yeah, I mean in the bed, man. I'm going all he out. He knows me pretty well because hey, you know, be a lady on the streets, but in the bed, I want a slut. Do you get a tongue up your ass? All 
the time. Uh, but I would feel I get bad my for the girl. tossed by my woman all the time. And I would feel bad for the woman if she had to put her tongue up my ass. Not maybe, me. I, maybe I'm thinking it through too much. See, you th if you think about it too much, you won't be able to enjoy it if you think about it. Too much. When you put your tongue up a guy's ass, is he on his back with his legs spread open, or is he is he is he is he? Uh, <laughs> Tracy, you're saying yes, but I, is that, that seems very it? feminine. Doggy style. That's Bring kind of weird. Right it's doggy me. style, and I was like, it's not doggy that style. Be, no, that was your howl. It's when you get your when you get your ass ate. This is how you sound. Uh, uh, really? Uh, uh, bring the bitch right out. Of you. Uh, uh, you, you ever fuck with the taint? The what? No? The taint. The taint. Oh. Sure. Well, in between? Yeah. I love you fuck that. With that. You love that. Yeah. See, I'll explode in your face after that. You, your whole shit be painted like Pompeii or something. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I'm just a little uptight, I guess. I mean, but you're such a beautiful woman. I got to get more of these videos. I'm Thank telling you. you. Tracy, you got to get on her website. Yeah, but I like them big, man. I like, you know me, 200. This girl. C section skull. No, you oh, don't. This girl. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take them like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I regulate every shade. I don't care. I regulate, I don't discriminate. Big, fat, skinny, you short, know? ugly. Is that a piece of jewelry that fell on the floor there? Oh, is this yours? is my uh, vibrating necklace I brought for you. Now, what is a what vibrating, is a vibrating necklace? necklace? These are our new pirate toys, and this is a necklace. How powerful it, is it? It's still this. How do you yeah. use it? And it goes that? on different speeds. And you just be, put that right on the clip? Uh-huh. And, and look at it. Does that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel that's it. That's Can I powerful. Can that on your taint? Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> Show me how it's used. I don't understand. You take it and yes. you put it, like, right here. Let me see. Right on there, huh? Right Get the... <laughs> Tracy's trying to see what's going on. <laughs> she, she, she forgot to wear her panties. Oh, yeah, and you, I'm looking at it. And you put it on your breast? Yeah, you can put it anywhere. What does that look like? Show me how you do that. Oh, you keep your clothes on when you do that? Oh, I see. Oh, you're wow. So silly. Look at that. <laughs> Tracy. Tracy, none of that goes on at 30 Rock. Tina Fey never does any of that, does no, she? No, no. She is huh? cute. She is very cute. Well, Riley, I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. You are adorable. Thank you. There's nothing wrong. Pretty vagina, man. <laughs> yes. Her joint is not beat up or nothing. No, she's very she young. She don't look like ham hocks, man. How old are you, Riley? 22. 22 years old. Well, you got a great future ahead of you, I'm Thank telling you. you. Uh, it was great to uh, uh, meet you. That's what you did. You met her. I met her. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, uh. you know, you suffer from a little bit of ADD, Tracy, and yet I see you're fully focused on her and <laughs> able to sit and pay attention to whatever and it's she been, says. been, what, ten minutes? Yo, never... she got it in my face, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't every day that you get to see vagina. <laughs> Check out Riley's... Well, we get to see vagina every day. <laughs> every day, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Tracy, let me tell you something about Riley, because I see you're quite taken with her, but I did read the article on you in Rolling Stone. He has a big movie coming out with Bruce Willis, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, it says in the in the article that you are in love and that you're actually engaged to be married. You're engaged to be married to a new what? woman. That's what it said in the article. Is that true? I don't know. But that was that we did that a long time ago. <laughs> we did that long before I met her. Picking some cock blocking. Um, you're really taken with uh, Riley, aren't you? She's beautiful, man. Her eyes, her lips, and everything, man. Yeah. yeah. Throw it up. This is the kind of girl you work hard to get. Yeah, I couldn't keep her, though, man. I wouldn't be able to keep her. Why not? I'm too jealous. Oh, really? Yeah, me too. Way she too can't jealous. work when she's with you? She's no, got to get out of No, no. She got to stay in the house. Walk uh. around ass naked. <laughs> to lock her up. I would be very... I w it would be hard to be your boyfriend because I... Man, you jealous. know what I would do. The first thing I would do, I'd hit you where you do the at. Uh. With that booty uh. fat. <laughs> have you done anal on film yet, uh, Riley? Film. You have not done, Riley. Uh, you have not done anal on film, but you do it in your personal life? Mm -hmm. Do you yes. enjoy anal? I enjoy not enjoying it. You, you like the, the, the pain. Yeah. You like the pain. I like wow. being really submissive. And you would want to have anal sex with her before vaginal Hell sex? Yeah. Really? All of that. Uh, ass to mouth, all of that. You would want to do ass to mouth. <laughs> do you ass do to mouth, ass? all of that, bitch. <laughs> Riley, do you do ass to mouth? I've never done it. <laughs> I know that should probably get mad wet, man. Yeah? Is that the case? I eat it like a guy roll. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, would, yes. So uh, here's a suggestion. Go ahead. She gets on a Sibian and I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I would be willing to pass the controls over to Tracy. Did you ever ride a Sibian? Do you know what that is? I know what it is, I've never been on it. Do you want to try it? Okay. Do you want uh, Tracy, a celebrity, to work the controls for okay. you? Okay. 
Would you like to do that, Tracy? What's the Sibian? I'm going to show you this. I didn't know if you you'd be know into it. You don't know about the Sibian, but, but I want you to do me a favor, Riley. I want the truth. I don't want fake orgasm. Okay. I want to know if Wait it really minute. gets They're you bringing off. in okay. equipment and everything? Yeah, the What's equipment's happening? coming in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just wait until you see what hat? we do to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? We might let you work the controls. And, 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 and Tracy, maybe give Riley an orgasm. And you too. No fake orgasm. I don't want you coming in your pants. Wait a minute. Pants. i got to come too. i got to pull my meat out. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, that's the city. Go sit on that thing, Riley, and I want your honest opinion of what you okay. feel inside, all right? I want to know the truth. No fake orgasm okay. here, all right? This is not a porno movie. This is real life. All right, yeah. here we go. All right, Tracy, you're about to, have, you're about to give Riley... An orgasm. <laughs> all right, let me get these mics on. Tracy, will walk it over there. We like should all wear masks. Yeah. Um, now, Riley, tell me everything that you're feeling. If you can be vocal during it, that would help. Okay. All right. Could I sit with it right now? You sit on there. Well, are they well, going to put a cover on it? No, they got to put a cover on it. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. There's a lot going on here, Howard. All right. I was just telling Tracy, you know, how to use the the Sibian correctly. Now, I would, I would think Riley would need it up to at least 50%, okay. if not more. Oh, my goodness. All right, Riley is undressing for this. Tracy, <laughs> Tracy, you look confused. What's confusing about this? I ain't never had no equipment. I'm too young for equipment. Riley, you look about perf as perfect wow. as it gets, to be honest with you. All right, sit on that oh thing, Riley. Goodness. This is the life right here. Right here. Oh, uh, Tracy, you're going to remain clothed for this? Thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tracy, when you work this, just don't jack her up to 100%. I Work won't. her in slow. I won't. All right. Uh, Riley, I want uh, you to be 100% honest with me and tell me what you're feeling inside. Well, what do I do? All right. Start her at 20%, Tracy. All right. Gary might need to take over. I think Tracy can't Tracy's handle it. He's a little no, I'm good. timid. Yeah. This is dope. Timid and shy. Get the mic on there. Are uh, you feeling anything? Oh, my God, yeah. You are. What has he got it at, Gary? Probably, probably about about 25. All right. Get, put her up to 50% and let's see what happens. That's, that's, keep going a little bit. that's 50. Oh. Already? Wow. You need more juice? Yeah, let me see it. Uh, she is not scared. Uh, It happened? Uh, oh. She came. It happened? Riley? Yep. Yeah. Take her down. Tracy, you can kill her with that thing. <laughs> it happened? For real? Wow. Look at that. This thing is blissful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that thing God. is shining, man. Talk to me about what I just happened. She's going to squirt. So you really liked it? Yeah. You weren't kidding around? Yeah. Good Lord. Wow, let me see from behind. Man. You didn't. He came in. Good Lord. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Well, Tracy, you did a great job. I feel like you two really hit it off. Now I'm supposed to do comedy now? <laughs> yeah, no, you go smack and sit on the couch. Listen, Riley, that was one hell of a situation that just happened here. Thank I want to say how... Um, if all these dudes wasn't in here, my dick would be hard. Whoa. You want to, you want to keep the Sibian rubber? Yeah. Absolutely. Would that be okay, Riley? Of course. Isn't that nice? This is mine? Yeah, you that's yours. You it for me and everything? Of course. Yeah. Look at you. Wow. <laughs> this, Tracy's this on this. <laughs> where are you going to display that, Tracy? Huh? Oh, in my house. Tracy, where, where, can, where are you going to display that? This, uh... I'm going to hang this up on my one. Put this next to the Muhammad Ali gloves of mine. Riley, thank you and good luck and come see us again. Okay, thank you. Uh, you were delightful. Mm. And Tracy, I'll talk to you about your, mo mo your movie with Bruce Willis in a minute. <laughs> All right. Go, go smoke a cigarette. And Riley, uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll, uh, we'll be back right after this. Sit down. No, you're not going. I'm going to talk to you. Where are you, you. going? All right. We'll be back with Tracy Morgan right after this. Oh, what is? I'm going to fuck you like a wild lamb when I want this. I'm retarded, you jerk. <laughs> you stupid bastard. Who's here? A big movie star, Tracy Morgan. This is um, star a great... stage and screen and television. This is very big for you, what's happening. I believe, and I'm going to make a prediction. 
You're going to go into a whole other level now. you got a film coming out with Bruce Willis. You think, screw television, he's going to be a movie star? Yeah. I think this is the beginning of your movie career, and I think it's going to be Never good. see TV again. No, nope. I'm gonna, I'm fulfilling my obligation to Thirty Rock. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm not calling nothing because I might spoil it. So I'm now just you're going talking like a politician. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not you're calling smart. it. No, I'm you're not smart. Calling I'll it. tell you why you're smart. <laughs> Thirty Rock has been good to you. Tina Fey has been good to you. Yeah. You're gonna, and you know what? You'll stick with that. I bet you're making a good yeah. dime with that thing. Yeah. And uh, you stick with a good thing, but you start to do films. Yeah. Like, like what Belushi and Ackroyd did. You don't you know want to jump mean? the shark, man. Don't jump the shark. Now, how did this all come about? 30 Rock has catapulted you. Saturday Night Live never used you properly, as far as I'm concerned. Never. I'll tell you what happened. Me and Tina, we came up with that speech for the Golden Globes. And that was the tipping point. What do you mean? What did you say at the Golden Globes? At the Golden Globes, when we won the Golden Globes two years ago, a year ago. And I did the acceptance speech, the Obama speech. Right, and, right. That was the room, man. It's the Golden Globes. That's the room. What rule. did you say? Remind me. I people. forget what I what said. What do you mean you forgot? This I, was the moment and you forgot? I said that if I told Tina Fey if we won, I was going to give the speech for post-racial America and Kate Blanchard had to deal with it. <laughs> and when you gave that speech, the whole room lit up. I mean, I'm sitting there and, and you got Al Pacino, and you got Clint Eastwood and everybody just cracking up. Big stars were cracking yeah, up. cracking up. And did I Bruce Willis saw see it? it? Did Bruce Willis see that? I, get, I don't know if Bruce saw it, but I know Mark Platt and people at uh, 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 WB saw it. Warner don't you Brothers think your it? work at 30 Rock is what made them aware of how funny you were? Absolutely. Right. And they Absolutely. see that you're a workable artist. You've gotten over your problems. You're not drinking. You've got your diabetes yeah, under control. Yeah, my mother spoke, too. Your mother spoke. Me and my mom speak, man. I love my mom. Oh, you're talking to, to your mom That's again. my mom's, man. Come I can't on. believe it. Your That's mother was... You was and a... your mother... You were not raised by your mother. Uh, to a point. To a point. When I got into high school, I went to live with my father. Because I knew I, I, need him, I needed him at that point. But you and your mother were on the outs. I mean, yeah. you've always been kind about her, but yeah. you were on the outs. Yeah, we had our differences. Do you say in the back of your mind, of course she speaks to me now. Now I'm in a movie with Bruce Willis. Now I'm on 30 nah, Rock. Not about Look, my mom. Not uh, about my mother. But do you have that not feeling? Not about my mother. Come my mom just went through 16 hours of, 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 you know, what do you call that? Labor. Labor. Right. Yeah, she ain't got to. She, my mom's going to talk to me anytime she wants. Why did you and your mother My mom's really... going to love me unconditionally. I, she, I spent nine months in us. She's going to love me whether I'm funny or not. The why did you and your mother ever stop talking? I don't get it. Because I guess uh, when I was younger, I was a young black boy in the ghetto, and there was a lot of things going on around me. And at that age, I know if I would have stayed where we were, I would have became a statistic like the rest of my friends. And I needed my daddy at the point. At you that were time. a drug dealer. But yeah, a bad well, no, listen, I dealt drugs. Right. But I was not a drug dealer. I dealt drugs, but I was not a drug dealer. I knew I wasn't going to make that a career. I couldn't put up with the crackheads, man. Right. I threw a meeting one time with 25 crackheads in a fucking room. Right. Because I was selling nickels, okay? Right. Five dollars. Right. They would bring me sometimes two dollars and three hundred pennies, and I'm not counting them fucking pennies. Get your shit together. You weren't a good drug dealer because no. you couldn't deal with the the. I the, felt the, there should have been a union, and I felt there should have. I was like the Hoffa. It wasn't even a good career move. No. You didn't like the job. I didn't like the job. There was no fucking lunch break. What do you mean? It was hard work. You would get killed if you took a lunch break. So how did you know you were funny enough that you could get out of being a drug dealer? You went. You, you were brave. You went right down to a, a comedy club, right? And you tried out. I didn't know. It took for my boy Alan Boxdale to get murdered. Right. And when me and him used to be bagging up the drugs, he, I would have him cracking up. And he would always say, what, what the fuck are you doing, man? Take your ass to the Apollo. And I'd be like, fuck that. I'm going to be like fucking, you know, Frank Lucas, you know. And Why do you think? When he died, it just clicked. You it clicked on to me. You got hired by Saturday Night Live, and they didn't know what the hell to do with you, did they? They could have gone to been, been a disaster this career. You finally got no, to Saturday Night Live. No, what it is, you cannot blame. You can't blame Saturday Night Live. I was there with young people that was from a totally different walk of of the world, right? Some place totally different, and that takes time for them to get your voice and know what's going on from the hood. Didn't you have a chip on your shoulder at Saturday Night Live? Didn't no, you feel like never, these people don't never. think I'm funny because I'm black? I was too busy black? being thankful. But didn't Lorne Michaels come to you and say, Tracy, listen? 
The reason this isn't working is you think we hired you because you're a black man, that we needed a token black man. We hired you because you're funny. Yeah. That's what he said to and you. And it clicked on to me. And, and then you finally on. embraced that the job. That was other people in the black community, other comedians hating and all that, telling me, you know they're not going to use you because you're black. You know that. And so I've learned not to listen to anything outside of me. So your own black brother fed you bullshit because he was jealous. Some of them. Some of them did. Yeah, but that's just competition. I'm not mad at that either. They that brought just, the race card in and said, they just hired you because you're black. Sometimes, I mean, Keenan Ivory Wayne made a movie about it. It's called The Hollywood Shuffle. Right. But can you imagine? Think about, kids. think about the hate in that. You know, here you are. You got the break of a Dude, you think about running for your freedom back in the days. Listen, my son. Listen, Harry Tubman and them in there reading books and shit. Right. That went on then. I'm talking about yeah. your life, though. People came up to you and said, you know what, man? Discouragement. You, uh, you're the only reason you're there. You're black. And it's a black guy saying it to you. Well, Howard, don't act as if what? this doesn't uh, happen to everyone. And I'm talking white. about Tracy. I'm talking about, don't make it a black thing. Look at the black oh, yeah, man. It's, it's the it's black a man. Thing. It's a white thing. It's white people it's, doing it's what it is. Talking about it's talking about Tracy's life. I'm instructing, I'm instructing young black men who are listening that it's not uh, always it's just a white man. Human no being. matter who you are, no matter where you come from in life, don't listen to no fucking body. Fuck, that's what I get from my mother. I get her stubbornness. She had five kids, and everybody told her probably that we wasn't going to amount to shit, and she never gave up on her kids. So when I love Lorne, you, mommy. So when Lorne Michaels turned to you and said, listen, I hired you because you're funny, yeah. it started to click, and then the career got better even at Saturday my Night My face Live. came down. Because and I began got, to feed. You began to feed. <laughs> and, like began to feed. and see the monster that is show business, and you began to wrestle with it. Uh, and then, after Saturday Night Live, Tina Fey comes along, and she recognizes how to write for you, how to use you in a show. And then people start getting turned on to you. But you were having your problems. Yeah. You almost fucked the whole thing up. Yeah, but you got to understand, man. You almost man. lost your foot. This is not the black, this is not just a black thing like Robin says. This doesn't come with, for anybody, no matter who you are, what color you are. This is, success and show business and all that stuff, it don't come with no instructions. Look at my friend Artie. It don't come with instructions. You live and you learn and then you learn some more. But you almost did, you you, you were drinking so heavily that you almost lost your foot. Yeah. And that would have been the end yeah. of everything. Yeah. You didn't care. You were self destructive you were yeah. going to kill yourself. Yeah. Why do you think you wanted to kill yourself? I didn't think I wanted to kill myself. I was just partying. I was just having a good time. No, you weren't just partying. I had fun. I had money now. I had fame. You People were... were paying attention to me. And I thought I was having a good time. I didn't know that. My I didn't know nothing about diabetes. I thought it was just like cough. <laughs> I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? You didn't so, understand to take care of yourself. Yeah, I overlooked how, how deadly that disease is. You weren't educated. And I overlooked my, my wife, my ex-wife and my family and I wasn't dealing with reality because then I was here and then after this was over I was back here your ex-wife still causes so, you you know what I mean I was back in the hood your ex-wife still causes you great sadness you consider that a defeat you were with this woman she was with you from the beginning 21 year marriage she stuck by you I don't think she causes it I think I caused that yes. I think she gave me joy but you're getting pussy now and you like it I mean, we moved on emotionally. Yeah. You know, physically, I'm a man. I'm Trey Morg. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not meant to live alone. Like like Luther Vandross said, I'm not meant to live alone, man. <laughs> Let I'm me not understand. built for that, man. I got to have somebody in my bed keeping my feet warm. Explain to me something. You are with a woman now. You are engaged, are you not? Uh, I'm not officially engaged. But what you're, are you? You're living with a I'm woman. Li I'm just chilling. Who is this woman? How come I've never met I don't know who she is. You tell me. <laughs> Why is it in your apartment? I'm chilling out in my apartment with my animals, and I'm chilling. And that's it, Howard. Let's talk about your animals, because I'm one of I know. have friends. I have a lady friend. Is this an affect? In other words, is this to when girls come over to look cool, or are you really into these type of animals? I love my animals. I have exotic animals. What are you talking you have about? Two what killers, that? You have two killers. Snakes. I'll tell you exactly what he has. He has an aquarium filled with sharks, killer sharks. No, I gave the snakes away. I gave you them did. to my boy Kenny. Because it's creepy to sleep in an apartment with sharks, I mean, with snakes that could kill you. No, they it? were pretty. They were majestic. Yes, but they could kill you. If no, they they're not getting out. Now, my tank that I had, it was custom made and it's really secure. And they don't, they don't kill you like that. They 
I mean, they're not. I feed them. As long as you feed them, you won't. You made a beautiful statement once. You said, you know, here's all these beautiful fish that exist in this world. We never get to see them. We so don't I, even know they live with us. So I keep them in my apartment to remind me. And also, you said you like predatory animals because it reminds you out there how the sharks eat and they feed on each other, and it reminds you how tough the world is out there. Is that true? My sharks, my baby. Do you really need to be reminded of that? How I tough was going to say, who, how could you forget? Right. No, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, when you look at them, they're beautiful, and they don't want to be hand-fed. They want to go get theirs. Right. So that's what that reminds That's a I... metaphor for that. I'm going to get mine. You don't have to give me nothing. Show me where the door is, man. I'll get through it. What you're referring to is... I'll take that motherfucker off the hinge. When you, ref when you feed your sharks, you feed them live, uh, other, you know, fish and things. From time to time, I put some goldfish in there. Right. Do you ever feel bad for the goldfish? Do they ever remind you of you in the ghetto when the when the bullies would feed on you sometimes? Nah. You never think about that? Nah. No. Um, you like to watch them feed the Because I was shark. a shark, baby. You were always a shark? <laughs> yeah, you man. You never would take you, advantage you, of? No, nah, I mean... Were you a fighter? No, nah, I was a lover. Okay, and I had a sense of humor, so the bullies, I would make them laugh right. to keep them off my ass. My oldest brother was crippled, so I couldn't go get him. You know, so I had to, my, my sense of humor became a defense mechanism when I was younger. Uh -huh. But then I got older, that shit became a business. Did people pick on your brother? Your brother was very ill. He nah, had... my brother was the man. He was. Je what? Reality? Yeah. My brother's name is Reality. His real name is Jimmy Morgan Jr. But his 5% his name was Reality, and nobody fucked with him. Was he in the 5 percenters? Yeah. Yeah, he was a tough was right. guy. Yeah, and what was, was his no disability? Joke. That was my that was my father when my daddy wasn't there. He taught me how to fight and all that. What was his, his disability? Dad, he was he was a he had meningitis when he was younger, uh -huh. and it affected his legs. Took his legs was out. He, in a, he was in a wheelchair. Nah, he he could walk, but he was crippled. He was crippled. severely crippled. And but he made it into the five percenters. Was, up here was this five percenters is one of the toughest gangs in the world. I don't think they're a gang. I think it was a culture. Uh. I wouldn't call it a gang, but it was a culture. Well, I've been beaten by many five percenters. So. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I received many beatings. You shouldn't stay your ass out of Harlem, goddammit. Oh, <laughs> stay I had your no ass choice. out of Brooklyn. <laughs> don't be saying baby, so come through best style. You Tell know my parents it. that. So, so your brother was a tough guy, even though he had his. But he uh, was a righteous dude. He wasn't a thug. Right. He wasn't a gangster. He was a. He was the head of the household. Right. But he was tough, and he would. I mean, as far as failing classes and all that, he whooped my ass, man. He kept us in check. The five percenters are the toughest guys around, but they also have a religious culture too. But I think he was doing that because he was searching. Right. He was trying to come up with a solution sure. on his own. Maybe find his own family. I don't know how he is with that now as far as religion and all that. I don't know how he is with that right now. I think he's spiritual, but he kept the name. Mm -hmm. You know, that was his identity, reality. Reality. So you stay in your apartment mostly now. You've learned not to go out too much. And no, I'm here. How would I go out? I go out with you. I just, I'm just, I'm just putting myself around people that's into what I'm into, that's cool, that's good. So you're I, not... Uh, hanging out in the clubs with the He's people. Nah, man, man, I can't do that, man. You ain't nothing in trouble there for me. Yeah. For me, that's good for everybody else. Here's the but irony. I know I'm public right now, and I'm out there, and, and when you get to a certain point, there's a bullseye on your stomach and a target on your back, and I'm not trying to have that. I'm from NYC, <laughs> and I already know the time. I'm not. I'm like Flavor Flav. You know, I got the big invisible cock on me. <laughs> I know the time. So, you know, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where somebody could just fuck with Trey. Mm -hmm. Just because they drunk and I don't drink and you know the witch and I was like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So nah, I, let's, I did it. It was fun and I let it go. Now well, here's I'm just the, working too much. Here's the uh, irony of the situation. I work too much, Rob. When, when Tracy had to wear his ankle bracelet, yeah. the ankle bracelet actually infected his uh, foot and oh he my almost God. and that's when he almost lost his foot. So my you ankle. learned, you hit rock bottom and now you learned your lesson. Now I'm now, going up. Now you're going up. Now there's something very... Can you very, imagine your ankle bracelet we, kills this, you? know what? Yeah, that that exactly. was the bottom for me. Wow. We fall down, but we get up. You know, it's not no sin to fall. Imagine the doctor says... You comfortable down there? <laughs> that's when it's fucked up. Imagine the doctor says to you, your ankle bracelet's infected your foot, and now because you don't take care of your diabetes, we're going to have to take your foot off because of your ankle bracelet. You know what I said to him that night? What'd you say? You ain't taking shit, motherfucker. Right. Right, he's called the doctor motherfucker. Yeah. Isn't that smart? You ain't taking <laughs> shit, motherfucker. Well, you definitely don't let him take you after Are you crazy? And I didn't curve it. I didn't say motherfucker. I said motherfucker. <laughs> I, I What's meant the difference? that shit. What's the difference? You ain't taking it because when you curve it, that means you don't mean it. Right. It means you close your eyes when you dunk it. 
Aren't you afraid you say to the doctor, motherfucker, he might not give you good treatment? That's what I always Then I go to, he ain't the only motherfucking doctor out there. I go to another hospital. There's something going on in your career now, while I will call the pivotal point. This film with Bruce Willis is considered A-list, top-of-the-line, big-budget film. You've never been a part of something like this. No. Am I correct? No, Warner Brothers is a classy studio, man. It's number one. Warner Brothers is number one. When you're making a movie like this, how are you treated on set? Like you like you died and went to heaven, am I correct? No, because you got Alec Baldwin, and you got Tina Fey, you got Judy, you got all these other people doing other things, too. No, no, no. You know? No, what I'm just saying talking is, about a movie set. When you're on the movie set... Aren't you treated like a god? I mean, they make sure you've got your meals. Make sure you're happy. It is, it's is—it's almost like a f I like never a eat. I never go to craft services, man. I get my food brought to me, whatever I want, in my trailer. My trailer is like a million, two million dollars, you know? Mm -hmm. when you so were growing I'm up, When you were growing up, did you ever see yourself in a two million never. dollar trailer? Never. Sitting there eating this best food? Never saw none of this, but I knew I was going to be famous some kind of way. I thought it was going to be in the NFL, like being a running back or something like that, but I never saw this. I bet you never imagined. Come on, I did Carnegie Hall. I know, it's something else, isn't what's happening to you. But now let's discuss what, we, what we're, we're looking at. If this movie makes a lot of money, you understand what's going to happen. You're going to get offered a lot of movie scripts. It's going to be game-changing time. This is big pressure but for you. you know Don't you kid it? yourself. I'm not, I mean, I'm not kidding myself, but I also have other people that's working with me that know how to do this. We know how to say the word no. We know how to be selective Look as far as scripts. Why is uh, Bruce Willis a huge star? Franchise. Die Hard. One, two, two three, franchise. four. And I got to work with him. And B-Dub is my dude. He, he's, still, he's still giving me my little tips. When you're on the red carpet, don't speak because it looks weird when they take the picture. I'm Just gonna, smile. And, you know, I'm like going to tell you something. Man. Somebody t sat me down to it. The movie this weekend makes... Forty thousand dollars. You'll get some offers and things afterwards, but they won't be great scripts. Forty thousand? No, no. I mean, forty million. Oh. It only makes forty million for the total <laughs> after it's all done. If it makes fifty million, the scripts ain't so good. Now, if the movie grosses anywhere between eighty to a hundred, and one weekend? Not in one weekend. Oh. I'm talking about the whole total. run. Okay. You're talking a whole new ball game, my friend. Hundred fifty million. Insane ball game. Now you got to be thinking about this. This has got to be weighing on you. I don't want to see you crack from this pressure. I think this weekend you should stay indoors. By with yeah, those animals. You know what, Yo, Howard? Can I say something to yeah, you? Yeah, please. I grew up in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. You want to talk about pressure? Go ahead. When I mean, you don't know when your next fucking meal is coming? Go ahead. I grew up in poverty, so I don't miss what I ain't never had. I'm just staying funny. I'm having a good time. Yes, but listen to me. This weekend I might go do a set. No, no. I don't want you out by alcohol, nothing this weekend. This weekend, you think very... this is a, a weekend that could take him off the wagon? Let me tell you something. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, no. This weekend, I want you to put your ankle bracelet on. <laughs> no! Yeah, that's Never. what I want. Never! You realize... There's nothing in this world. If this film grosses $150 million, Will Smith will be licking your taint to get in a picture with you. You hear what I just said? But as long as I'm stupid, <laughs> you're Howard. What? As long as I'm stupid to it, yeah. I'm good. Now, tell me how this happened, this film. So, in other words, somebody saw you on 30 Rock or saw you at the Golden award Golden show Golden. or something, Golden Globes, and they brought you a script and said, Bruce Willis is attached to this? Yeah. That's what they said. I got the phone call. First, they said, at first, I did another movie. I did a movie before I did the Bruce Willis movie. I did a movie with Martin Lawrence and Chris Rock. That's uh -huh. coming out in April. And I just screened it last night at Sony, the Sony Theater. How is it? I just screened it. it what? Is it good? <laughs> yeah. The roof? That's out the here, hundred man. million one? That's the one. Out of here, man. Is that the what? hundred million I don't know. One? I don't know. More money, more money, more money, more <laughs> What's money. What's that movie about? It's called Death at a Funeral. It's a remake of a British movie with Peter Dinklage in it. And, yeah, Peter Dinklage is in this? Yeah, he's, oh. in, he's in our movie too. And it's he just, that right? Zoe is in it. Columbus Short is in it. It's just starts to Danny Glover is in it. It's just funny. Now, talk it's about funny Cop Out like for a, a mother, second. Huh? Let me understand Cop Out because this is the big weekend. Right. Bruce Willis and you're your buddies. You're the guy. You're the guy who has to be funny. Almost like in trading places when, not trading places. No, 48, and, 48 hours. hours. I don't have to be, but it's a privilege, Howard. To be funny. It's a privilege, man. To make Robin laugh, that's my baby. Look at that smile, man. You and Bruce to Willis. Crack you? Did you, to, and, did you and Bruce Willis get tight during this movie? Yeah, that's my boy. We started off, before we filmed the movie, we had lunch one time. Uh-huh. And 60 days later, that's my brother. 
He really? Cool. Yeah. He didn't bust your balls at he all? He didn't no, try no, to no, tell you how to act? No, no. He didn't say you're not being funny Never enough did here? None of that. Never did none of that, man. Was there a time on the set where the director had to come and speak to you and say, listen, no, Tracy, so you got to get your shit together? At the, no, never. Well, Kevin no, Smith was no, the I'm director. A professor, Who was the director? I'm, Kevin I'm, Smith? If you ask anybody at Saturday Night Live and don't ask, uh, don't ask Sherry O'Terry or Chris Kattan, <laughs> but ask anybody else. I'm cool people. I'm, I'm good. I'm well-rounded. I'm grounded. And um, Don't you feel glad in a way? Sherry O'Terry and um, uh, Chris Kattan were not nice to you at Saturday Night Live, and now look what you're doing. You're in the movie with Bruce Willis. Yeah, you're in the movie with Chris I Rock. I don't wish them no bad or nothing like that. I no. moved on. And I know that, but, but don't you secretly smile and hope. You should have invited Chris Kattan and Sherry O'Terry to the premiere of Cop No, I'm not Day, doing that, dude. Why not? I'm not going there I like go, that. Oh, look at you, I'm not motherfucker. Going out. I'm not <laughs> And I'm not inviting it. motherfuckers from back in the days that treated me bad, so I don't give a fuck about none of that stuff, man. I'm taking care of the people living under my roof, my ex-wife, my, my kids. What is Sherry O'Terry doing now? Like, I have no wise? idea. What you is would it? have to call and ask him. I don't know. Right. I don't know. It, it's what she ain't doing. God isn't damn the lesson, she ain't doing no movie with Bruce Willis. Isn't, the, le that isn't shit. the lesson to be learned to be nice to everyone because you never know who's going to be? people you meet, what Ralph Cranston says, Same people you meet on the way up. Gonna we'll meet the same old people on the way down. That's right. And so I just keep going forward. I don't. I, I. I don't let the highs get too high and the lows get low too low. I'm 41, man. If I was gonna go off the deep end, I would have did it already. So I'm chilling. When you say Bruce Willis is your brother, now he's uh, you know. Was... After the first scene, after the very first scene we filmed, he realized, wow, it's music. And you guys are making music. That set the tone for the whole movie. That was the first time he felt chemistry with somebody. That was the first time. Lighting, we we right? didn't have no rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. We just had lunch, and then we started filming, and everybody on the set, Kevin Smith. Kevin, I worked with before. Kevin uh -huh. Smith, the I film director. I worked with Kevin before. Me and Kev, you know, that we, you know. Did like, you read recently that Kevin Smith was on an airplane, and they threw him off for being too fat? Yeah, that's corny. Uh, that's whack. Come on, man. That's you know a what? fucked up world we live in, man. Well, what's he doing flying coach Kevin's anyway? the coolest dude. Why is Kevin's Kevin Smith the coolest dude in the world? Why is man? Kevin Smith flying coach? <laughs> I have no idea. Don't Same you think that's strange? Kanye, I fly coach sometime, man. Really? Yeah, if I'm going to, on a hour, some ways this hour, I'm, I'm not spending no, come on, fronting? I'm not fronting for nobody, man. I'm, the flight is 45 minutes. What the fuck am I buying first class tickets for, man? Put my black ass in coach, man. Isn't it true? Put you, me on the wing, motherfucker. Isn't it true you had to do all the heavy lifting in this movie, that Bruce Willis was sort of riding you, riding on your coattails, that you're the hot comedian, I don't think so. you're the come one. Come on, that's Bruce Willis, baby. Right. As far as if anybody was riding, Anybody go tell me? I ride the shit out of here. Now, when you say it's your brother, I ride the shit out. Bruce Willis don't need to ride shit of mine. Don't you? Oh, by That's the way, Bruce motherfucker Willis, and you just said the hot one, the hot two, <laughs> the hot three. If anybody was riding anything, Trey Bag was riding Brute B Dub. So you, when you work with Kevin Smith, you know I said this on the air today. Kevin's got some problem with me. I don't even know what it is. I, I used to be friendly with him, but and I like Kevin. I don't like all of his movies. I like some of his movies, but he takes offense at that. But, but but really, isn't isn't the airline saying to him in a way? Instead of Kevin getting angry, maybe Kevin needs to lose a couple of pounds. Maybe it was it's like dangerous. your bracelet. This was a wake right. up. Maybe call. it's a wake up call. Why I not have look no at it that idea way? what happened. I was not there, and Kevin is my friend. Does he need to lose some weight? Be honest. What? Kevin what? is happy. What? No, no, no. Look at me. I'm not. No. Do you I'm care about the man? You on that <laughs> Do you care about I this guy? Go, yes. If you care about him, why don't you say something and I'm say? I'm not. That's not my isn't place. Isn't it time for? Uh, I'm not here to discuss him. Come on. I'm serious, Howard. I don't want to get in them. You told me. Is to, he too you're just, fat? You was the one that just told me to just stay off the radar. Don't do this. Do you, now you trying to suck me into something. Do you want Kevin to lose his feet? No. Is that what you're saying? No. You would rather see Kevin doesn't want me to lose my feet. You were in trouble. No one came to you and helped you. Now you have to help Kevin. And say, Kevin, Kevin? all right. I just saw him the other night. He's all right. right. He's okay. Cool. All He's right. Cool. All right. Now, Bruce Willis, you say he's your brother. Are you hanging out with him personally? Is he having you over the nah, house? Ah, he works, what? man. He works. He works. Yeah, he's making movies. Right, man. right. He's filming a movie right now. You met his right. new wife? That dude don't get no breaks. Emma's, oh, she's beautiful. Gorgeous woman. Yes, was she yes, hanging sir. around on the set? She was at the premiere. She never hung around on the set. He's yeah. working. First time you met her was at the premiere. My woman don't hang out on the set. If I was working for sanitation, she wouldn't fucking come and drop with me on the truck. Here's the key question. Keep your ass home. I'm working. Did Bruce Willis give you his cell phone number?
Yeah, I have BB Dub's number. In other words, if you need to call him, you can call him. Call him anytime. Have you ever called him personally? I called him 4 o'clock in the morning. When? When we was filming. Why? Because I needed to ask him something. What did you need to no, ask? No, I'm not telling you what. What did you need to ask? Were you looking <laughs> for horrors? This guy right here. I know exactly what it was. <laughs> what? You were looking for some bitches. No, and you know, I wasn't. Bruce has man. all the bitches now. Bruce, let me tell you, Bruce is happily married, man. Well, yeah, but for years, he, I mean, to get into, to be a girl to get into his movie, you had to fuck him. Who? No? Bruce. Who had to fuck him? I'm saying a lot of his co-stars, I bet, had to fuck him to get in a movie. Dude, right? I have no idea. Did he I'm ever just, play that? I didn't get my shot yet. Did he ever play that? I know that? when I bring females <laughs> on my movie set, they're giving me some pussy. I don't know anything about Bruce. He seems like a very nice man. He I is think. very nice. He's, right. I, I, but I, I'm just fishing around. Though. I know, when, I know. Why would you need to call Bruce Willis at 4 o'clock? Just to say what's up. No, no, no. I want the truth. You've always just been on Just to say what's up. I've never been in this place. I've never been in this space before. In this Were you looking for pot? No. Are you looking for a little weed? You, you are the, I'm going to start calling you the district attorney. <laughs> I'm going to call you the DA, baby. You were looking for some weed. No, I wasn't looking for the weed. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm 40. Well, I don't smoke no herb. Man, that shit is corny. I mean, what could Bruce Willis know that Yo, you need to know? Yo, kids, the dope. There's no hope in dope. What could Bruce Willis know at 4 o'clock in the morning that you needed to know? Well, he was, he was uh, in L.A. Yeah. And I was in New York. What were you looking for? And a new sexual act, position? No, 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 no. I mean, what, no, what could no, this guy no. help you? What, late night nah, prayer? No, it was about something in the script. We speak, we speak. The script? Man, me and him call each other. We speak. Yeah, That's all right. Okay, cool, cool. We're cool. both grown men. Right. We're not like juveniles, man. I'm, what the fuck I need to call him about women for? We. Come on, dude. I just told you. I used to sell fucking crack. Whatever I need, I know how to get. Are you worried about the weather this weekend? They're saying there's a snowstorm coming through the and northeast. And that'll be bad for sales. I think that that'll be good be? for sales. I don't think. I, I, well, you ch you just uh, you just uh, may change my mind about it. You know, like, yeah, like I was worried home. because I guess. You know, this is the first time, and I want the nights, the stars to line up, and everything to be perfect. And then you like, you know, nah, maybe this is the type of weather that people just take their loved ones out and go check it out. What is the movie about, anyway? You're two cops, and what do you have two to Two Brooklyn do? cops, you know, um, and... Uh, he has a storyline, and I have a storyline. I'm jealous about my wife, and I think she's cheating, and I put the nanny cam. And he and he has, like, his daughter's getting married, but he doesn't really have the money to pay for it. But So he has this Pathco, this vintage Pathco baseball card that gets stolen, in the, and, 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 we, and it's on. And Guillermo, my boy, my boy Guillermo is the bad guy, and he's demented, and it's funny. And but Anna, you're cops. Yeah. Yes. But you know the thing that I'm proud is about. Is it shooting? Movie? Is there killing? Is there, is, you know, you, is get, there I get, shot. you get shot. You get shot. I kill a couple of motherfuckers, you man. Know. I'm fighting a fight scene and all of that Look shit. Look at you. Man. Yeah, it's do you get action girl, shit. Do you get girls in the movie? Dude, we are in a car, the Mercedes Benz, and Bruce is hanging out the fucking window, and I'm driving backwards 80 miles per hour. Wow. And another car and is and blah, blah, from the gate. This isn't even like, acting for you. Have you been shot in real life? No. Nah. Never? I've seen some shooting. Right, but you've never been shot. No. Well, this is fascinating. Never been stabbed, never been shot. I believe this is going to put you in a whole new ball game, my friend. I just hope well, you don't... Well, we can only uh, hope. I hope yeah, you keep we your We hope head. to lose you as a guest. Now, don't go... <laughs> no I want to I, go go I love y'all, man. You know <laughs> don't I go Hollywood <laughs> like this Eddie Murphy Yo, one. people tell me all the time... I get so many when people. I've had people walk up to me, go, "Yo, when you on the Howard Stern show, it's Christmas." And I right. said, "Yo, man, and when I'm on the Howard Stern show, he let me be free, man. I have a free? good time." You were giving a girl an orgasm ten minutes. Ago. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Don't I go ain't Hollywood. doing that on the Holly, the Bonnie Hunt show. Keep it. Bonnie He's Hunt doesn't. He's going home with the cover. I'm not of the doing Bonnie that on Hunt the Bonnie Hunt show. Naked on her show. Come on, man. I seen ass. I seen twat. I seen everything. That You're day. going home so with eight the cover. the fucking morning. Are you doing the? David, are you doing the David Letterman show? I did it. You did it last that Monday. You know I'm always trip. But I'm, you don't I'm, bring up the fact that he had some problems with the ladies. Oh man, you, you know my scandals. Yeah. God damn it! You want to know my scandal? I give you a sex scandal. Right. Really? God damn it! I give you a sex scandal. What is it? I'm putting some shit out there about me and you next week. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he's calling it? Bruce Willis? Brother, you are so pretty, Jesus. I mean, oh, I mean you are need a baker pretty. Oh, oh stop it. Oh, she. And she is fine. You know what we learned She's yesterday? She's pretty and she. She's not cute. Her she ass soft lubricates. Oh, stop it. You we didn't learned learn it yesterday. That yesterday. Wow. See, that's a she woman. Never used, that she up. never used KY. That's a woman right here. I, that's a woman I right learned there. that. I, 
so that's a woman. moist like Duncan Hines. All right. What do you think about? I love some discharge, man. That's a real woman. That's a fucking special sauce on the big back. Is that what it is, discharge? That's a special sauce. Robin, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I love some discharge. I don't know what you're talking about. You had discharge, dude. Let me tell you something. Take a few. I love discharge. Oh, my God. I'm going to have my company's going to be discharged production. Uh, let's go to um, let's go to a couple of people. Trey has limited time. He's very he's, he's on the verge of very very big stardom, and uh, he's excited to get there. A couple of uh, phone calls from your fans because you can handle spontane you know spontaneity. So uh, let's go to Joe. Joe, you're on the air in Union, New Jersey. Joey. Joe, hey Howard, you might as well just say goodbye to him now. This is the last time he's gonna be on your show. He's gonna get too big. He's gonna Joe, come on, man. Are you gonna get too big? You think I'm like those fucking bo goombas in Brooklyn? <laughs> you, and you think I'm like those goombas in Brooklyn? Let's go to Cyrus. Cyrus in Philly. Hey now. Hey now. Cyrus, what's up? Yo, what's up, Trace, man? Cyrus sound like a name from a dude that's in the penitentiary. That's Cyrus, man. Right. Uh, you're supposed to keep down the download, Trace. Right on. Yeah, um, no, like, last week, Lisa Nacanelli, um had you on, um, laughing with the stars. I had to listen to that joint, like, six times. Please. What, what, what? Say that again? Yes, as a matter of fact, we ran a special last ah. week. Uh, many uh, famous women came in and played their favorite moments from our show, and uh, Lisa Lampanelli, of course, played one of Tracy's appearances, and I was listening cool. to it, and uh, that was a lot of fun. That, Lisa's so, my girl. Yeah. That's my baby. Uh, so Cyrus reminds us of that. All right, Cyrus. Is that it? All right. Yeah, thanks for All right, thank you. Me again. All right, one last call. That's it. Let's go Irish John. Irish John. Hey, Howard. Hey, Tracy. It's time for you to come clean. Who was the white woman that hosted SNL that you had sex with? Oh, that's right, Tracy. Oh, uh, yes, you owe us. Get God, back. I was John. <laughs> come on, Tracy. <laughs> Who was it? Hillary Clinton. Ah, uh, stop it. You did? Hillary Clinton. <laughs> uh, you know Hillary Clinton's the only other woman that can self-lubricate uh, from her backside like Robin? Yeah, I know. Right. I know, I'm telling you. Was it Betty White? Everyone has a theory that it was Betty White. <laughs> it might have been. Yeah. You know me, I'm Howard, a douchebag. <laughs> Tracy I was did. Watching, I was watching an old SNL the other night, and I know who it is. It was Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson, you hey, Hudson, are I'm a devil. You. Hey, did you, you, did you look at that when we kissed? When I did, yeah, uh, yeah. When did, when I did, uh, she went down the sewer. Yeah. yeah. When I kissed, but it wasn't Kate Hudson. It wasn't you Kate You gotta Hudson. wait for the next book to come out, homie. Would you ever reveal that in the book? And the next one, I am. And the next you are good yeah. to do it. First one was very one, good. You're honest about everything. Yeah, and the next one, I will be. All right. Go ahead, Frank. You got the last word. Hey, Howard. How are you doing this morning? All right, brother. Hey, uh, good to hear Tracy Borden on air again. Long time listener, long time fan. Uh, in days like this, you're not going to retire, man. This is gold, and I hope it goes on forever. Listen to you, DC 101. Uh, well, thank you, Frank. <laughs> Frank, I promise you, man. That's right. I'm going to go check the movie out this weekend. Hey, Frank, quit smoking cigarettes, man. <laughs> I hear it in your voice. You smoke Marlboro Lights. Cut that shit out. Is that right, Frank? Cool. Cool. Cool, man. Cool. 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 All right, all right. Jeff the Drunk, one last question. Go ahead. Hey, Tracy, how are you? What's up, baby? I want to know what's the most amount of women that you banged? At once? Yeah. You've had two All women. at one time? Yeah. Yeah. I had three girls at one time back in my heyday, my glory days. Saturday Night Live days? No, before then. Before then? Yeah, Interesting. my drug dealing days. You had three really? yeah. bitches, as we say. Yeah, I had three girls uh, giving me head at one time. Wow. A lot of spit. Wow. A lot of Look gagging, a lot of spit. Well, listen, it's a very full life. A very full life. We celebrate your movie coming out. We're very excited. Yeah. For you. Thanks, Howard. Uh, really, go check it out, right? You're one of the good guys. Of course I am. Uh, you're one of the good guys. I'm, I'm pulling for you this weekend. I hope the movie does fantastically well. And uh, I believe this is going to be a big deal for you. I think this is a game changer. So I wish you the best. I love you, Howard. I love you, too. And you're a great man. Where are you going to next? What do you got to do? The Today Not Show? It. I'm going home to get back in my bed. You're going to go relax? I did all the press. You did Letterman. Yeah. You did this. You did, did you do Letterman? I went out Leto? to L.A. I did four shows. Tavis Smiley. Ellen, thank you guys for letting me. Ellen, you show. did? Ellen. Have you seen her on American Idol? Bonnie Hahn. Bonnie Hunt, Jimmy you did. Kimmel. You did Jimmy. Jimmy, I know, is a good friend of yours. Yeah, I did. I did everybody. No but Jay Leno, though, Shelly. I noticed.
No, I didn't do Jay Leno. I think that I don't think they're up because of the Olympics. Are you angry with Jay for taking Conan's job? No, you are not. No, no, I'm still on Thirty Rock. We're cool. We're happy. Everyone's happy. We're happy. Uh, He's NBC. Rock. All right, Tracy. Thanks, and thank you for operating the Sibian. We couldn't find anyone to do it. <laughs> and uh, 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 yeah. congratulations. That's the first uh, guest we've ever allowed to take a cover out of here. Tracy taking home a piece of the Sibian from when uh, from when that beautiful woman uh, sat Riley. on it. Riley Steele sat on the. Uh, and you're going to put that on your wall. I'm putting this in, uh, this is going to be in my, my homemade Smithsonian. <laughs> okay. It should be next to the gloved one. We'll be, uh, we'll be back right after these words. Thanks, Tracy. Tracy Morgan, everyone. Who is this? I'm going to fuck you like a wild man when I want this. Huh? I'm retarded, you jerk! <laughs> you stupid bastard. And Riley Steele came in, who Gary says is the most beautiful porn star to ever grace the studios up here. Still think so. And we should start off with... The man who came in at the end of Riley's segment and stayed for his own, and that's, of course, Tracy Morgan. And when Tracy walks in the door, forget about the studio. When he comes just into the compound, immediately it just all starts. Well, he starts talking before I get the headset on him. You know what I mean? Like, you could hear him as he gets closer to the microphone, and he's got a million things to say, and he's, he's observing everything that's on the wall. It's nonstop. And how did he instantly want to go in there when he heard that Riley was was doing her thing? Well, what happened was he got here, and there's two green rooms. When you, if you're watching on TV, as you walk into the studio, there's a green room on the right, which is the primary one. There's a green room on the left for when on the the one on the right is getting used. So he was in the one on the left because Riley's people were in the one on the right, and he goes, "I'm all disoriented." You know, he's like, "He's like, I don't get it. Well, how come I'm not in my regular room?" So uh, I said, "Well." Because we have somebody's in there. He goes, well, who's in there? And I said, well, uh, we have a porn star. Her entourage is in there. And he did like lit, lit up, you know, like the antenna went up. He goes, I have to meet her. I said, yeah, don't worry. We're already working on that. So he gets in there and does his thing. And then she rides the Sibian. And Gary takes a bullet and lets Tracy run the controls. Yeah, no, no. It was just, I mean, it just seemed like it was funnier to do. And, and uh, he, I hand, you know, first of all, I put throw this box in his hand and, and with knobs on it. He's like, what do I do? And I'm like... Don't you know? Just turn this one slow. Don't worry. And I was coaching him while he was doing it. I was like, give it a little bit more. You go up a little higher. But I mean, as I said uh, to the guys, it ain't rocket science. You turn it up more, and they yell louder. And he kept the attachment, right? He did. <laughs> he did. That's like that's like Sal territory. She autographed it. Um, it was exactly what Sal does, except she autographed it. He put it in the case before you know he didn't lick it in the middle. Didn't which is smell Sal, it or yeah, anything. Exactly. Yeah, I think Sal retired from that, though. I think he stopped, you know, cleaning them and doing whatever he did to those attachments. But with Tracy in there, and he's got a big movie coming out, another movie coming out very soon with uh, the Peter Dinklage one. If the movie's hit and he becomes that movie star, does he forget about the show? Do you think? Because he's such a huge fan and he no, really worships Howard. No, and and the the first time he was ever on the show, he was with his son, his older son, and I didn't know Tracy from a hole in the wall. And I walk by, and he's like, oh, my God, there's Gary. Come on in and say hello. So he's a big fan of the show. Um, you know, listen, maybe we don't get as many visits, but we'll get the visits. Do you think he should move on from 30 Rock? Depends on what this movie does. The movie does $200 million? Fuck yeah. He just keep making movies. Now, he's an Emmy-nominated actor on 30 Rock, yet, and he's very good at what he does, but can you tell me the differences between Tracy Morgan and Tracy Jordan other than their last names? Almost none. I mean, I mean, he really the way he acts here. They tone down the cursing, but you know, there's a lot of stripper jokes. But it's very similar to the character he is on the show. I was surprised when I first started watching the show that they let him do some of the stuff that he does. But it works. Now, what did you think of his explanation about how he admitted to dealing drugs, but he was never a drug dealer? I didn't understand that. Did you follow that, Benji? No, I. I you know what? I might have zoned for a sec. Like, uh, but what? What did he say? Like, he said just that. He's like, yeah, I, I dealt maybe drugs, he meant but he was I was no for drug other people. No, he meant I was no drug dealer. Does that well, mean maybe, he wasn't that good at it? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Well, guys. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't. Maybe he. Uh, maybe he doesn't like that label as a drug dealer. Or maybe he was. Maybe maybe it's like, hey, I'm a waiter, but this is just a job. I don't want my life identity to be this. Well, I know a lot of people who don't like labels. Like a lot of, you know, you know, girls from the Bunny Ranch don't want to be called whores. That's true. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know how long he did it for. He only did it for a couple of years. Yeah, so. yeah. And so now he's in this movie with Bruce Willis, and Howard asked him, do you have a problem, you know, riding his coattails or anyway? And he's like, no, I have no problem riding anyone's coattails as long as, you know, it leads to success. And what do you think of that attitude? I think Chase has been doing it a long time. I think he's had to deal with a lot of shit. I think if, you know... He'll get to the top any way he can get there. He just he doesn't care. And why should he? 
Trace, sh- Tracy's to me is like one of those like so happy, so likable, so like just having fun. But I'm really curious, like what really pisses him off? Like when does he act? Does he actually get mad? What you know? What's he like when he's pissed? Oh, I would think he. I I would think he gets mad. I think a couple times ago when he came on, we got a peek into that window when he was talking about the Saturday Night Live people that he put in the book and said, you know what? Look at me now. You said I was going to amount to nothing, and now you're all out of a right. job. I don't think he shows it or says talks about it on the air, but I think he takes some satisfaction that it's probably pissed him off that people, you know, as he said, you treat you be- just should treat you the same way on the way up as you do on the way but down. But growing up where he did, he grew up, I think he said, in Bed-Stuy, and uh, being, being uh, for a while, being uh, uh, working, selling drugs, I would think he would have to have been, like, a, a pretty tough guy, beat beat some people up. He's not the kind of guy. He seems so nice. I can't imagine him beating people up. Maybe he didn't have to. Maybe he, you know, Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we've been watching too much TV. Maybe he's a good drug dealer. Hmm. Let's talk to Doug in Maryland. Doug, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, I was wondering if you guys noticed uh, you were making fun of J.D. yesterday, I believe, about his mantra, the highs, highs, and the lows, lows. Tracy Morgan said the exact same thing today. I just didn't know if any of y'all caught that. We all caught it in the back office. We all sort of said, hey, no, exa- exactly what you said. And J.D. was walking around saying, you see? You see? He was very proud of himself. Yeah, cause you guys were kind of busting his balls about it. It was just kind of funny. Did you like hearing Tracy Morgan today, Doug? Oh, yeah, it's awesome, man. It, the guy is hysterical. He's one of the funniest guys out there. All right, Doug. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Uh, do you think he uh, – well, let me actually play this clip. It's two, Ted. Tracy was talking about what a big weekend's coming up, and Howard had some interesting advice for him. Hit that. Listen to me. This weekend I might go do a set. No. No. I don't want you out by alcohol. Nothing this weekend. This weekend, you think a very... this is a, a weekend that could take him off the wagon? Let me tell you something. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, no. This weekend, I want you to put your ankle bracelet on. No. Yeah, that's Never. what I want. Never. You realize there's nothing in this world. If this film grosses a hundred fifty million dollars, Will Smith will be licking your taint to get in a picture with you. You hear what I just said? But as long as I'm stupid, <laughs> yo, how? What? As long as I'm stupid to it, yeah. I'm good. I mean, he's sort of keeping it in check there, you know? Yeah. I mean, great. What does stupid to it mean? It, he doesn't understand. Like, I don't know enough to be to to know what to do, so I'm okay. just going to do what I like. Right. I'm not going to get caught up in all that. Right. I'm just going to do my thing, and we'll see what happens. You know what's really weird, by the way, with movies, and uh, I've seen this a lot, you know, when, especially when they have a movie that they put a lot of money into, the movie company tracks the movie, and pretty much by eight o'clock on Friday night, they have a pretty good idea of how the whole weekend's going to run. I mean, they really do know. And I've been on the phone with people who've been dealing with it literally hour by hour. They just start to see what's going on around the country, and you know, it's a rare instance that a movie does really good on Friday night and shitty on Saturday night, or the other way around. If they, they'll know by seeing what's going on in the Northeast by 8 o'clock, whether this movie's going to be good for the whole weekend or not. They can almost, down to the dollar, track what the weekend's going to bring. And typically the tracking works well through the weekend, but if the word about isn't so great, it shows up the next weekend. It doesn't right. happen like from a Friday to a Saturday. Right. As you're saying. Who is this? I'm going to fuck you like a wild man when I want this. Huh? I'm retarded, you jerk! <laughs> you stupid bastard. The funniest clip I saw over the vacation is, uh, and i got to credit Benji for this, this is crazy. Uh, so Doug Goodstein, when I saw him, he was telling me, because I'm walking with Benji the other day. He said the freakiest thing happened. They're walking along the streets of Manhattan. And out of nowhere, a, a like a Bentley, like a really expensive car, pulls up, parks, and out walks Tracy Morgan, the very famous comedian. Is he driving it, or is he... He's with two other guys. I think he was driving. Yes, he was driving it. Okay. As a matter of fact, he was. Tracy just all of a sudden randomly gets out of the car and sees a bunch of kids, mostly black kids, and he starts signing autographs. He, he, he just stops his car and starts walks out of his car and starts signing autographs for anyone on the street. Ben, this is oh, Benji's walking by with Doug Goodstein. He sees it. He, he quickly turns to Doug Goodstein and says, you got a camera? Doug goes, yeah. Benji goes, okay. And Benji immediately goes into shtick. Ah. So Benji runs over. By Tra- <laughs> it's unbelievable. He runs over to Tracy Morgan and he starts screaming. Now, there's about 100 black people 
around Tracy. It's a very black scene. Where are you? Where were you guys, Ben, when this happened? Uh, just about two blocks from here, probably. Okay. Really? We, were, we were leaving work. I never realized there were so many black people. There's so many Locked blacks, blacks people, right? York. There were yeah. so many blacks. Yeah. <laughs> you I mean, don't ever see that here, do you, you? You don't see one white face except for Benji's. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm watching this thing. And I'd play for you, but the audio is so shitty. But you got to understand what happens. He runs up to Tracy and he starts screaming, Eddie, Eddie. Oh. Eddie. He goes, uh, let me have your autograph. Tracy's looking at Benji. He doesn't even remember him from the show. You know, Tracy's seen of a lot course. of people. And yeah, who, who remembers Benji? You try to block him you, out. You, if he's lucky to remember you and me. Right. How's he going to remember Tracy Benji? shoots him a look. He goes, hey, man, who do you think I am? He goes, you're Eddie. He goes, I'm not 80. I'm, I'm Tracy Morgan. He goes, what do you think? We all look alike? <laughs> so Benji goes, I know who you are. You're Eddie. You're Eddie. Eddie, give me your autograph. He goes, who the fuck is this guy? Now, now Tracy's completely consumed with Benji. Then he gets off Benji, starts signing more autographs. Benji starts managing the people, pushing the you know, black people away. Everyone, back away. Uh, he's protecting him. Yeah, protecting. Now he's involved. And, and, <laughs> and, and now Tracy's like, has this look of like, he's confused, is the best way to describe it. So Tracy starts freaking. He's like, who is this guy? Who? Are you, what are you doing? Come on, I, I'm organizing you. I'm organizing everything here. I, I'm in charge. Because you're not in charge. Who are you? How <laughs> did you get into my life? Then Benji be, proceeds. People are trying to take pictures with Tracy. Benji now puts his big white face right in the picture. He, he stands next to Tracy, for, like pushing the people away so that he can be in the picture with Tracy. <laughs> And Tracy's like, what? Tracy's like such a good guy. I, I think he's just going to punch Benji. But no, he, he's like, he just kind of is perplexed and can't figure out what to do. So then Tracy goes, who the fuck are you? He's getting, now he's getting annoyed. Right. He goes, I'm in your life, Benji says to Tracy. <laughs> I'm in your life. He goes, you, you're not in my life. You have to leave. He goes, I'm not leaving. I'm in your life. <laughs> you know, I'm very impressed that Tracy's handling this in oh, such a reserved I, manner. I was shocked. I thought for sure Benji was going to be pummeled into the ground. <laughs> Benji, what was going on there? Didn't you, weren't you afraid of getting hit or something? No, nah, I mean, I don't think he's going to do something in the <laughs> like that. But, uh... <laughs> You have no idea how annoying. And nobody came out of the car. Well, no, the two guys. There were two guys that hang right. Was it two guys or one guy was with him? I don't. You know, Doug. Doug remembers better. I kind of. You were in a. So you were in your stick coma. Yeah, right. There was one guy and one girl, I believe, with him. Right. Oh yeah. Right. But they were. It wasn't bodyguards. It looked like just friends. They weren't going to hurt Benji. Right. But didn't you think Tracy at one point might haul off and hit him? Yeah, I was hoping. I should have. <laughs> Did, did I tell the story right, do you think? Because I watched the tape. I thought I thought that was everything I saw. Did I miss anything, Doug? No, well, one thing that um, that I didn't put on that clip is that afterwards, um, ben, you know, Tracy's driving away, and Benji thought it was a good idea to run after his car. But, and I lost Benji. Like, he just started sprinting down the street on, in, in Manhattan after the car. <laughs> like a dog. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, what are you going to do with that clip? Are you going to put it on Howard TV? Yeah, I'll be on a uh, daily show from today. I'll be on starting tomorrow night. <laughs> what are you going to do about the audio, though? It's kind of rough. Yeah, maybe I'll subtitle it wherever you can. It just oh, good. Sucks, you know, just I'm gonna have, I have a better camera in my bag now. That was uh, unfortunate. Yeah, but it, it's still great. To, you'll love it. You will love it, Rob. <laughs> I can't wait thing. to see it. It's Tra insane. Did, you, did Tracy ever know? No. He never broke character. No. And then Benji was signing autographs for Tracy as well, which was even weirder. <laughs> He's so Benji. They, the kids are handing pieces of paper to Tracy. Benji starts grabbing them. And he starts signing Tracy's name. <laughs> That's when Tracy goes, who the hell are you to do that? He goes, I'm in your life. Oh, he goes, you're wow. not in my life. He goes, no, you're, I'm in your life. I, I'm in your life. Was that what you, you were signing his name, right? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't sure. And putting like inspirational messages down. And yeah. stuff. <laughs> Kids were giving them to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Benji, were you signing your name as Tracy Morgan? Because Tracy said to you, he goes, why are you signing my autograph? <laughs> I think yeah. I put both our names down. <laughs> and the kids were accepting it. That's amazing. Oh, it, it is the freakiest piece of tape you'll ever see. Who did this? Milk, crate, marauder. Uh huh? I'm retarded, you jerk! <laughs> 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 
Tracy Morgan is a huge success. He is on 30 Rock, of course. And uh, he has become America's sweetheart. (laughs) There he is. Tracy staring at Robin. That's my woman right there. Tracy, are you always on? Because I was in the bathroom and I could hear through the walls. I could hear you carrying on out there. I was hanging out with Medical Pete. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Medical Pete. He got a tall chick. Look, Pidgey over there, man. Yeah, oh, he got you good. Yeah, I thought he was a crackpot. You got to hear this. I thought he was a crackpot. Funniest tape I've ever seen. When did you figure out it was Benji? Um, when I saw the tape. Yeah, <laughs> who showed you the tape? My, my assistant, Kenny. It's so funny. Listen to this. I got to tell the audience. I got to let them in on what you're talking about. I told this story the other day, yeah. but now that you're here, I'm going to tell it again. Benji's nuts. Benji's walking down the street with Doug Goodstein. All of a sudden, <laughs> he's whacked out of his head. Tracy does a thing where, I, I didn't know you do this. You saw a group of people standing around. And you pull your car over, expensive car. No, and that's you not how I did it. it. What did you do? I was I bought a Canon, a sh- uh, camera, right? The Canon, the new Canon camera, and I needed a chip for it, right? So, and that, matter of fact, we needed a camera bag because the bag didn't come with it. So we pull over to an electronics store. My girlfriend was oh, in the store, okay, and the kids sto- saw me. Oh, I see. Okay, because we thought you just randomly pull over no, and start no, signing autographs. No. So Tracy was really nice. Seriously, it was sweet. It was, it was a group of kids, mostly uh, black kids, right? Yeah. And they were all coming over, and Tracy was signing autographs. <laughs> Benji sees just randomly. This happened by accident. He sees it's Tracy. <laughs> Benji goes running down. He says, Doug, grab a camera. Doug had a shitty little phone camera. Yeah. And Benji starts, he goes over, and he stands next to Tracy, and he starts, what did you say he first, Benji? He starts screaming, Benji? Eddie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. First, he screams, Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> Tracy's looking at him like he's going to fucking beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he goes, what do you think? We're all, we all look, look alike? Right, right. right? You said to him, I mean, what do you mean, Eddie? Yeah. What do you think I am, Eddie Murphy? Yeah. He goes, yeah, you're Eddie Murphy. He goes, well, I'm not. I'm Tracy Morgan. He goes, you're Eddie. And he keeps calling him Eddie, irritating the shit out of him. So Tracy ignores him. Tracy uh-huh. starts signing autographs. Benji grabs the autograph papers and starts signing Benji and signing Tracy. Yeah. And signing. So Tracy turns to him and goes, who the hell are you? He doesn't recognize Benji. He goes, who the hell are you? And Benji goes, uh, I'm signing autographs. No, I'm in your life. No, no, not yet. He goes, I'm no. signing autographs. And Tracy goes, you, who are you to sign? He goes, get away. He goes, are you, I'm not going away. I'm in your life. <laughs> and Tracy goes, you're not in my life. He goes, you, I'm in your life. Yeah, there's Benji signing autographs. And there's Tracy. And now <laughs> Tracy's, Tracy's completely obsessed with Benji. <laughs> and then uh, finally, Benji, what, what was the final horror scene there, Benji? What did you do? Tracy was... People are trying to take pictures, and Benji keeps oh, putting his head Benji in the Benji starts posing for pictures with Tracy, <laughs> and Tracy just gets so annoyed he gets in the car and pulls away. And then Benji tries to get in the car. <laughs> it, was a, it was weird, man. I was like, yo, I talked about that all day on my yo. I talked about girl on my yo. This dude, this, this dude, right dude was bugging out. <laughs> how he close were you? Out. How close were you to just like, punching he, him in the head? Yo, he lucky I had my crew with me, man. <laughs> and stuffed him in a garbage can or something, man. It was unbelievable. It's great. I'll show it on Howard TV. It was so funny. I mean. I was getting mad, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I was getting Mel Gibson mad, man. I know. What do you make of this? I was this? getting white boy mad. What do you think of this Mel Gibson? Man? I've been telling people white rage is way worse than black rage. Man. Yeah, well, I think you're right. I mean, have you ever heard? That's where the Incredible Hulk comes from, man. He ain't no superhero. He's a drunk white dude in a bar. <laughs> have you ever? He was angry. Because then he got with her and he realized that she was like, just using him. He got, hey, he was enraged. Don't you Mel think? Mel Gibson is enraged. Well, he listen. can't believe this is happening, right? Yeah, he bugged that girl, took him. For a ride, but once she's a hustler. But once Mel Gibson says the N word, that's it. Man, ain't nothing but hip hop. Only white people get upset about that, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Black people, rap, man. Hold it. Black on, people man. hear the N word. I say the, you say the N word, just say nigger. What are you talking about? He says to her, "I hope a pack of niggers rapes you." First of all, he's referring to black <laughs> men as packs, like wolves. That's racist. Yeah, probably. Yeah, coming right? from him. Yeah, coming from him. I mean, who isn't upset about I that? I know a couple of dudes that roll like packs of wolves. Yes, yeah, okay. There might be some guys. Yeah, that, that, that has nothing anybody. to do with their race. It's just what they do. Yeah. So, so you're not upset about it? Nah. You're not. You could work with Mel Gibson. 
Are you ready to work with Mel Gibson? If the check is right, I'm good. No kidding. <laughs> and we get him for cheap. Yeah. I understand. We can get him for cheap. I know he won't be the star. <laughs> That's right. He'll work with anybody now. This is the time work with anybody you work now. With you work Tracy, with anybody. you were so right. You could do a Mel Gibson movie now for Come what? Come on, I'm a star. You, for, you can get grand. him for dead. You can get him for cheap. <laughs> you see, this you is get him what? cheap. This Everybody is what? dropped him. You going in cheap. And you're going to be the star. And I'm going to say, I'm too old for this shit. But isn't it like Hollywood? Isn't as it? soon as I beat Mel Gibson's ass on film, I'm the hero. Now you can I'll be kick, bigger than I'll be bigger than Will Smith's son. Is you it, can, it, can it, kick it, Mel Gibson's ass on it, film. Does that drive you crazy? Seriously, the the whole Will Smith thing. I mean, with the kids and the gimmicking them in the movies. And the, I mean, isn't it a bit? But shouldn't dude, kids just be kids? If I see another movie about a young white dude who's a superhero who gets a hot chick, I mean, ain't all this anime? They need to. Will there never be another Donnie Brasco? But you do hear what I'm asking you. Is Will Smith doing the wrong thing? I mean, he's got enough money. He doesn't need his kid to be in the movies and be famous. Let the kid uh, have a childhood. Um, I, I can't speak on him because that's his child. Right. And that's Will. And I did enjoy the movie. And I think. Right. So, but um, I, well, you can't tell nobody how to raise their they children. Sure I can. There are a few you things can. that are wrong, aren't there? Isn't there something wrong? <laughs> yeah, but you can't tell nobody how to raise their children. Right. You can't. Maybe yeah. his son wants to do it. His son must work. Maybe his son wants to be like his father. Most children do. I'm glad his son is out there doing that instead of doing this. Yes, or but anything you else. seem to forgive everything. Mel Gibson, you forgive. Nah, you know. very I don't forgive. It's just, it's not that. It's just that, you know, I don't know Mel Gibson. Right. I don't know that motherfucker man he ain't what he did ain't affecting my motherfucking life right he ain't call my mother no hoe or no cunt or nothing like that <laughs> right it'll be a different story i'll fuck his ass up have you ever, i don't give a fuck have you ever lost your I'm temper str- yeah with a woman and called her a cunt a whore and- fucking right yeah but I, you make sure there's no recorders you know? that's right yeah, i mean you know you, have no argue, you have an argument with sure. your woman sure. but Ain't no, I mean, it ain't to the point where it was like, I'll fucking knock you and put you in a rose garden. I ain't doing no shit like that. Mel Gibson. If I got to do something like that, the pussy ain't worth all that. But Tracy, you know, it, if you listen to Mel Gibson's argument, take away the racism, take away the anti-Semitism. He was wrote, enraged. He was enraged because he felt, you know what? The motherfucker was a herb and he got caught out there. In other words. That girl never loved him. How are you going to leave your fucking wife? Yeah. He even says on the tape. If you really listen me, to ain't it. Ain't no other woman ever take me for my wife. Me and my wife got divorced. That was me partying. Right. That was alcohol. Right. The right. woman didn't take you away. She wanted off that fucking roller coaster. Right. And I had she I wanted to see her happy. So she's in a happier place, I'm in a happier place. This motherfucker's just out there. But Tracy, uh, Mel Gibson got mad, and maybe you can understand this as well. He felt that he was putting up a tremendous amount of money for lifestyle for her, really coming through. Even recording. You know, she's supposed and, to be some kind of musician. Right. So and he, he was helping her a with a career. And he said to her, you know, I come home. You don't even blow me. You don't. And she's in the club. We ain't have damn near nothing. That's every man's argument. What you got on? He says her pussy is hanging out, that her titties are fake, and that she's flashing them around. She's breastfeeding with fake titties. Can Man, he guy... had to know she was like that before he even got with her. Does a guy have a right to get that angry uh, if a woman is scrolling around with a nope. pussy hanging out? No. Go, eat doesn't. that. Eat right. that. Just eat it because you knew when you met her, motherfucker, she was like that. Right. That's what you. That's, that's what, you what attracted you. That's right. what you meant. You knew she was dealing in sin when you got with her. If a girl stops blowing you, like she comes home, you know she's obviously faking sleeping, and she, she's supposed to give you a blowjob that night. Instead, she, she was supposed to have a romantic night, get in the jacuzzi you with mean you. Suck my dick. Suck your dick. Okay, fine. I don't say blowjob. White dudes say blowjob. All right, I'm a white dude. I, I say suck Mel my Gibson. dick. All right. I say suck I'll, my I'll talk dick. a little black. I'll go there with you. <laughs> <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> All right, listen to me. Gag on my shit. What I'm saying is... I don't want no head. I want dope. It could drive you crazy, couldn't yeah. it? It could. It yeah. could drive you nuts. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You recently went to the White House. Tra- Who would have thought... Tracy you growing Morgan up, in the White House. Tracy Morgan. Uh, how did you end up at the White House? How does how do you get in touch with Barack Obama, our president? I don't know. You asking me? I don't have that connect like that. Somebody must have pulled my name out of a hat or something. How did this come about? <laughs> how did it come about? It just it, it, I was I was. Uh, Where were you when you got word? I was home and I looked at my my emails and my 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 PR people just said, "Listen, you got invited to the White House." Isn't wow. that something? 
you are going to the correspondence dinner at the White House. And I was like, what? Are I, you people, know, not bad for a kid who went to public school. I went to public school 59. Are you, you know say? Are you told about etiquette there? In other words, are people concerned that you're going to go there and embarrass yourself no. and the president because you're very street? And the president, after all, and Michelle, he's might street the, too. He might say that you might say he's street too. What are you talking about? He's he's street Obama's too. street, man. Don't let that suit fool you. What did he you? He wearing a Wu Tang T-shirt under that suit. You man. say the president wears a Wu Tang Clan T-shirt. <laughs> you gotta stop I, snitching T-shirt on, man. Save little Kim or something. What happens when you? By the way, you dated little Kim, didn't you? We was friends. You banged her? No. Never had sex with her? No, never. She crazy? I know little Kim. No. You like her? She's the sweetest person in the world. That I, when I was hanging around her, she was cool people. Has huh? success gone to her head? No, I don't think so. Do you go to the she White from House? Brooklyn. Do you behave in a certain way? What did you wear? Yeah, what did you wear to the I White House? I had a suit on. A I wore suit? a nice tuxedo, black tie, and I was kicking it. I was chilling. How does that come about, a tuxedo? Do you go and buy it yourself, or do you have an no, assistant? No, I have people dress me. You do? Yeah. What do you mean you have people dress you? How does I, have, that work? Uh, I forget his name. He's a the big designer. I got our best dressed on uh, when I went to the Emmys last year. So you I'll show fly. up. You show oh, up. You should see me. You should see me, Robin. Really? You would have jumped all over me, baby. <laughs> did you bring a date to the White House? No, it was just me. Why really? did you bring you a have date, a girlfriend? Because they, I, they didn't give me an invite for a date. It was just me. I would have loved to have brought my girlfriend Tanisha. You couldn't say I'm going to bring Tanisha. Hot. You never saw Tanisha. I think is she the girl on the video sitting in the car? Is that oh, light skin, oh. pretty? <laughs> Look mean, like a young Eddie Murphy's ex-wife. Yes. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. My baby. She's hot. You should see her. You should see her at the Emmys, dude. You exclusive. That's my with baby her? girl. I'm no just, that's my baby girl. We've been living together for three and a half years. Is man. that right? Putting it in, yeah. Putting What's it in. She riding. What, what? 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 What does she do for a living? Be with me. That's how she just. Living? Yeah. Be yeah. with me. Why not? She just got a, a degree. In what? what? And business management, yo. Oh. She graduated, so we went to Hawaii and chilled for like a week. Plus, I had a show out there. When you take her to Vic Hawaii, Stadium. do you go and hang out with big celebrity friends? She must be very impressed with you. We went to Hawaii and we got mobbed on the beach. She loved that, I bet. Oh uh, no, she steps back from that. Shit. She's but like, she sees her I, man. Not, this is great. You could have hired people to mob you. <laughs> I no. mean, that turns a woman on, no? I I, th I think she's proud of me. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? But she with me. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody else know Tracy Morgan. She with me. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> you hope. Or else no. you'll end up well, with Mel Gibson. Mel she was there with me yeah. with my diabetes and all that. So she knows the Florence Nightingale stuff. What did you say to the president? When you met him. Oh, man, you should have seen how it was crazy. It was overwhelming for me, man. I was crying and everything. Were you? Yeah, there was up on a podium, and I was sitting there, and everybody was in there. Everybody was, I mean, everybody. Who's everybody? Some, everybody, Morgan Freeman, everybody. Morgan and Freeman was there. Everybody was in Washington. Mostly black guys, uh, black no, actors. Is every, that gonna... everybody. White people. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Brad Pitt. Brad everybody Pitt. was there, man. With the beard, Brad Pitt. Everybody. Well, listen, I will, I'll tell you, that was the room. That was like the Golden Globes to the sixth power. Who who suggested that you be there? Who was the one who? I don't know. You have who no put idea. You on that I don't list. know. I don't know. But yeah? check it out. Now, I'm, and, I'm there. I'm, and, I'm and there. You get in a receiving line. The president stands there, and you are in line. Well, with he's already there. It wasn't that formal. It was a dinner. It was everybody? How do you meet him? him? Does he walk over to you? Or do you walk no, over to him? No, I'm getting ready to tell you. You gotta let me tell you. Go story. Ahead. Tell me. So something. I walk in, and you know, it's a red carpet. Everybody taking. So I'm there. I'm like, wow. I must. I'm in this league now. <laughs> right. No, you're big. You know, That's I right. opened up a movie and all of that too. Did President Obama call you Eddie no. by accident? No. Like Benji did. No. Oh, all right, go ahead. Yeah. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he called me Tracy. Right, good. So I took with, I stood by the desk and I took a picture with him. Well, back and up. I, How does it work? In other words, you're in a line. No, you just walk in. Walk in where? In a room. It was at the. Uh, it was at the the Hinton. Who was that guy that shot Reagan? Um, Hinkley. It was at the Hinkley Inn. The Hinkley. <laughs> the Hinkley. Whatever. What's that? It was at that hotel. Really? The same the hotel. Hinkley Hilton or something yeah, like right. that. And you walk in and and they say uh, Tracy Morgan. Yeah, everybody's just out there. Yeah. Nobody's and, announcing I'm by anything. Myself, no. Well, you were such a good conversationalist. You must have said something to the president. You must have. You started to cry. No, I looked at the president, and he looked at me and winked and said, what's up, Tracy? Yeah. Hi, Tracy. Yeah. And I just was like, oh, wow. 
Obama know me? You know what I'm saying? Then I looked over at Hillary. I mean, not Hillary, at Michelle. Michelle yeah. And she's talking to Jay Leno. And I said, what's up? I know. She looked at me and said, hey, Tracy. And that's when it, the tears came a little bit. Oh. I, I went back and sat back at my table. So I'm sitting there and I'm... I'm Everybody's just looking at me, and I'm just like, and then I look over to the left, and I see, like, Colin Powell knocked two people down trying to get to me. And wow. he came, and he hugged me. He came, made it straight to me, and he hugged me. And I said, and I'm I'm, like, I'm crying, and I got my head down. I'm saying, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, but I'm overwhelmed. This wow. is powerful for me. And he said, don't worry about it. I love you, Tracy. And I looked at him, and I said, um, I love you too, sir. And, um. I you, said, I hope you don't mind if I tell everybody you my biological father. You know, it's funny. He started laughing. Then when he walked away, I said, bye, daddy, in front of the whole room. It's and funny. Morgan Freeman, I looked at Morgan Freeman, and he was looking at me. You know, Morgan been around for a long time. Sure. So he probably recognized the face, but couldn't place, you know. So I started looking at him. <laughs> then I said, Daddy? <laughs> and he got scared. You know? and I got a 42 year old son out there. You know? I'm sitting he got there. Scared. You know, you describe meeting the president and getting overwhelmed when Michelle Obama says to you, uh, Tracy. And you had tears in your eyes. As you told it, I got the chills and I, I got a little teary myself because imagine if your grandmother had seen that. Tracy Morgan in a room. Where I saw yeah. that. Imagine if your father saw that. Yo, comedy. Comedy. Brought me all the way to the White House, brother. Wow. Gotta believe, man. You gotta I believe. believe. You know, you have said, and I, I think you say it jokingly, if you had uh, gone to college, it would have ruined you. You never would have had a career. That doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that. You don't tell your son that. That uh, you know. I'm talking about for me. If I would have did, if my life would have went any other path, I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't change anything, good, bad, or the ugly. 30 Rock uh, has done I had to go through the alcohol stuff, man. I had to go through the divorce. I wasn't ready for all of this if I hadn't gone that. All of that stuff, not that it was felt good, but it matured me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to, it made me strong. I had to, you got to go through the fire. 30 Rock really did a lot for your career. As much as Saturday Night Live brought you to 30 Rock, 30 Rock is the thing now because you're so brilliant in it. You play, in essence, uh, you're the heart of the show now. And that has done it for you, 30 Rock. So Tina Fey, we love her, right? Yeah, Tina was putting it in for me uh, on Saturday Night Live when I'll I wasn't you... getting in much. She would uh -huh. put me in stuff. I, you know, I guess she was smart enough to see that I knew what I was doing. Like, I was creating characters. I was writing. I was doing this. And she was smart enough to see that. That's right. right. That's right. She's it's smart. not that she's just smart, but she was smart enough to see that I'm smart. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this dude. She believed in you. Yeah. She believed she in you. Yeah. She didn't yeah. believe in you. But not only her, Lauren Michaels. Lauren I met Michaels, him the other night. Yeah, Lauren is the dude. Man, Lauren could have picked out of 5,000 people. He chose, you know, he said, yo, come be on a show. Have you ever explained to me how you got into Saturday Night Live? Like, what the process was? Did they come down to a comedy club and look at you? Was that it? Yeah, they came down to a comedy club, the comic strip. And That's the same place that they got Chris Rock and Eddie. And so they some scout, so to speak, sees you up on well, stage. Well, I was with Barry Katz. I was with Barry Katz. Me and Jim Brewer was on a show before that. God, Brewer so, does some impression of you. Oh, he tells well, some we stories like, we, about we're you like, guys. We're, we're not, we don't see each other much, but that's success. You know what I'm saying? He's successful. I'm saying, so we both were, Brewer, but when we when we was on, that's my dude. <laughs> Brewer, Brewer is some funny guy. You let me tell you something about Jim, man. He, we was on the TV show up in Harlem. Right. When I first got it, and black people loved that dude. What happened? Fell what, in love with that dude. Why is he not more famous, Jim Brewer? I think he's one of the funniest guys. I mean, his impressions are dead on. I can on. tell you why. Why? Because Jim don't conform. Jim doing it his way. Well, listen. It might take a little bit longer, but he doing it his way. He like Frankie. He always been like that. Jim going to do it his way. You've, of course, heard him do your voice, right? No, I don't. I don't. I don't hear too many people. I don't. Wait, I don't. listen. Listen to he was record. He's doing a special for us on Howard TV, and we're doing our twenty five greatest guests of all time. You, of course, being one of them. And here's Jim introducing Tracy Morgan for the special. Do you have that? Does anyone have that? Listen here. Listen. Watch and listen. Listen to this. Go ahead. Put up the sound. Well, no, this, this ain't gonna work without the sound. This boys. next guest. Listen. This guy <laughs> is like going to the zoo and watching the monkeys because. They make you laugh, but yet you don't know if they're going to toss shit at you. 
That's why he's just captivating. I've known him forever. <laughs> he's my man. And you better be careful because if you don't watch out, somebody's going to get pregnant. Tracy Morgan. It's my man. I'm on the Albert Stern show. Fuck out of bed with you. You fed my girl with Albert Stern. I'm on Albert Stern. That is brilliant. Yo, he do it just it sounds, it sounds exactly like you. He do it just like me. He yeah. sounds just like me. Word up. So you were at I'm the I was sir. You were at the comedy <laughs> you were at this comedy club. The guy comes, he sees you and Brewer that night, and they say, Hey, you're that good. We want you to come meet Lorne Michaels and audition for Saturday Night Live. No, Jim was already on the show. Right. Oh, I see. Jim was already on the show a year before, Will Ferrell and them. I guess they were still casting. Right. And uh, I went on, uh, Barry Katz got me an audition. At he, first, they wasn't going to, they didn't want, they didn't want to see me. They wasn't going to let me audition. Barry Katz said, yo, you got to see this fat black dude with a propeller hat. He's funny. Did you know that night you were being considered when you were up on stage? I didn't know nothing, man. I just knew I had three kids and a wife on welfare. And I was doing my thing. So Fuck that. I have nothing to lose, man. So That's how I feel right now, Howard. Was, I have not. Wait a minute. I, I don't have nothing to lose. I know that. But was, you know, now you do have something to lose. What? You got, you've got a big career. Now you're getting invited to the I White House. I lose my fucking mind like Mel Gibson if I'm not careful. That's right. You have something to lose. You have a stake in some society. some piranhas out there, man. I talk, if I could tell Mel Gibson, yo, there's a war out here on the streets between hoes and women, and the hoes are winning, <laughs> and they bring fucking back up. Did you just move your apartment? Yeah, I got, I'm living in the city now. I hear. I hear. I live in the right city. in the mid in Midtown, and it's so weird because there's so many porn shops like in the hood. Everywhere. No porn yeah. And the, no, Last here. night I went to go see. I went to go buy a Cop Out, the movie on DVD is the number one DVD in America now. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And like the dude was in the shop, and he was like, "Food shit!" Like we had a shopping cart and everything. <laughs> yeah, fake buttholes and <laughs> you know, yeah. extra large male Caucasian fist in the in the porno store. He has a shopping cart. That's the sign yes. of a loser. You yes. don't walk around. Yes, but you gotta stick your dick in some. Why not plastic? Isn't it kind of right, funny? Benji? Isn't it funny, Tracy? That like a guy would you think you'd be in, in the old days? You're embarrassed to be in a porno store. Now you're they're going, getting a cart. You, now you get a cart like you're a Toys R. Us. It's crazy. It was food shopping, dude. I had lubricants and <laughs> fake vaginas, like six of them, like four fake booty holes, everything. This guy's not getting any pussy. He had a fake mouth. <laughs> in you know, the mouth yeah, in the shopping cart. Ah. <laughs> yeah, like two fucking big extra large male fists. Hey, I can ask you something. Isn't it true years ago you bought Michael Jackson's glove? You spent like some unheard of amount of money, like fourteen thousand dollars, to buy Michael Jackson's glove at an auction, right? Mm -hmm. It was one of the actual gloves that he right. and people probably thought you were nuts buying a glove of I Michael love Jackson. Mike, man. Okay. So as it turns out now, the glove's worth something like forty, fifty thousand dollars. A lot of bread, man. And I would never have it. Never. Pay for it? Fourteen. Like, yeah. Wow. I would never sell it. Where did you go to buy it? I don't he know. sweated in that glove. <laughs> Where did you go to buy it? Uh, in the auction. You went to the auction yourself? Yeah, my boy Kenny got it. You sent someone there? Yeah. And you said buy and it And I'm me. about to get, what else am I about, I'm about to buy? Uh, one of Evil Knievel's helmets. Why really? Evil, you like a lot of memorabilia? I love Evil, yeah, I love Evil Knievel. Why do you love Evil Knievel? I would think. Evil Knievel is my, one. He's. I love him, man. I've patterned my life after Evil and Elvis. No kidding. Do you, do you own Elvis memorabilia? I would love to own a piece of Elvis, too, man. Well, let me ask you this. When you buy Michael Jackson's glove, do you keep it in a drawer? And I want to get, I'm, and I'm, when I'm, I'm, I also order, um, when uh, Vanessa Del Rio dies, I'm going to get one of her labias. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when and her you. her pussy lips, I'm going to get one. As the owner of a Michael Jackson glove. What do you do with this thing? Do you Where is it? Do you, do you display it's, it? It's right is in a is in a case. You have a case. It's in a case next to my propeller hat. The very first propeller hat that I ever wore on stage. Now, is it and one of the sparkly ones or is it um sparkly ones? Okay. The glove. Yeah, right. the glove. The it's glove. Heavy, yeah. Do you do you There was a lot of them. Yeah. He had a lot of them gloves. <laughs> do you ever take it out of the case? Do you ever smell try it? it? Do you ever I wear got it? it in storage? Do you try it? No, I put it on. You keep it in storage in a glass case. Yeah. Why not display it in your home? No. Why? 
cuz. What do you mean no? I don't bring anybody in my house. I I got that in a nice safe safe. But you would with enjoy, my hat. But you would enjoy seeing it, wouldn't you? I mean, that would be the that, point. That would be an idea, but I, that right there, well, I would have to wait till I buy a house. The, I will wait a minute. I, I would want to wait till I buy a house, and I would have a room we can for my man Lavelle. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to just have it right there, you know? Right. It just it's, seems a shame that you love Michael Jackson. You're keeping this. But thing I got a want. vision. I'm right. going to get a case in the wall, a nice space inside of a wall. Nice. And that shit is going to be like a museum. Hey, Howard. I like that. Yes. You know, last time Tracy was here, remember he did a, uh, he ran a Sibian ride? Yeah. He took the Sibian piece and the case with that's him. Right. Yeah, I got part of the that. museum. I got, I got yeah, that's, I got <laughs> that's all, all part of all the museum. All my stuff is in storage, man. <laughs> you, um, so go back to Saturday. I got a, I got a, um, I got a, uh. O.J. Simpson jockstrap? No, you don't. Yeah. Where would you get I that? I strain tea in that, so if you go to my house, don't drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> if Michael Jackson's corpse was available to buy, would you buy it? No. You would not buy his body? I'll let him rest in peace, man. Michael Jackson used to buy Elephant Man remains. He would try to get different corpses. I don't see why you I'm shouldn't... letting him rest in peace. I don't want nobody, I wouldn't want nobody buy my corpse, man. Let me rest. Right, okay. Let me rest. So, I'm not disturbing that. So so the price tag on a Michael Jackson glove now is somewhere up around $50,000, but you will never sell it. No. You will always hold on to it. <laughs> this, is yep. not, this is not something for speculation. It could be like 100000 now, man. Weren't you part of this effort to get LeBron James to come to the Knicks? Yeah, man. Man, we, 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 with the Madison Square Garden, they brought us there. They brought me there, and we just filmed like for three hours. This, you know, come to New York thing didn't work out, did it? Nah, he went to Miami. Disappointed? They, uh, yeah. Mad at him? No, because it does. It's not going to stop us. We, we the Knicks, baby. Me and you sit together. You're damn right. I was and glad he's not coming. Yeah. I think I'd have trouble getting seats uh, at the games. <laughs> no, I mean, one. He was just a piece of the puzzle. <laughs> We trying to build a team. Right. But it's a shame. And you worked hard to get him. They asked me to be part of it. I said, no. You know what? LeBron's a grown man. He knows where he wants yeah, to go. I, I and mean, I don't beg anyone. You don't want to live in New York? Go oh, fuck yourself. I don't care. New York is a place to be, man. That's Just right. Just a mecca, baby. Absolutely. Now, look. What's going on with you and your mother? Last time you were here, you had written your book, your bestseller. Mm -hmm. And you said to me. I don't have a relationship with my mother, but things are going to be repaired. Things are going to get better. I spoke to my mom on the phone two days ago when I went to, on my way to Great Adventures. That's yeah. a major thing. Yeah. W this was a major breakthrough, no? Yeah, just call and see what's up. What's that? You no doing? kidding. What's going on, when huh? was the last time you'd spoken to her up until two days ago? A couple of, wow, a year, a couple of years ago, man. Really? Now, so you make it sound so casual. You pick up the phone and call her. Why all of a sudden? Uh... My brother, I, I was on, I was out in Boston with my older brother. My oldest brother was on the road with me, and we had such a fun time. And I asked him about mommy. I said, "What's up with mommy?" and all that. And I said, "Give up, give him my number. Tell her to call me." So you know, as I'm driving, she called. Ah, she called you. It was a missed call. I looked at the phone. It was a missed call. It says mom's. Right. And then when I call, I when I got the great adventure, I just called her back. She said, "No, nah, I'm just calling to see how you doing. You are my son." Blah blah blah. I said, "What's going on? What's up?" It ain't me and my mom's ain't like. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's up? Did Jay she Niners cry? Stuff? No. Did you cry? No. Was it weird or awkward after a year or two of not speaking? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. It was it was crazy, but you know that's my mom. You Is know it going to happen? Yeah, I are know you exactly going to talk to her more often? Are you going to see her? Uh, my moms live out of state, mm -hmm. so what? so I don't. Unfortunately, you I don't, don't leave, leave the state. I don't. No, nah, it's not that I don't leave the state. I don't think he's it's allowed to leave the state. That, <laughs> it's not that. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm not a criminal. It's not that. It's just that I don't get a chance. I'm so. I'm uh, you're not being honest. You're not being honest. No, no, no. I have, a honest. I have a family that I gotta take care of. Oh, come on. Uh, she you know can't travel come either. On. My moms could do whatever she want to do. And that's so the, you that's two the aren't rub. talking My about. She, do whatever she but you two do. aren't talking about. But you got to understand. Seeing each other. Wait a minute. What you're I'm saying? I'm 41. Right. And we don't need to see family and relatives like that. Nobody's saying Me that. Me and my mom's got to take baby steps. All right. Well, That's my mother, and I think a phone call here and there is good right. Right, now. right now. I think what you're right saying now. is, I'm, I'm reading between the lines, and what you're saying is, your mom could get off her ass and come visit you. And she could come see her grandkids and all that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So you're a little angry. Been, uh, you're angry. No, you're not, angry. No, I'm not you angry. are. She could do no, it. No, I think I let She's it go. She's being a child. I think I, no, I think I let it go. Sometimes people project. 
and sometimes people try to turn you into their parents. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what she's doing. You know what I'm she's she might expecting be trying to you. turn me into her father. Uh, of course. Uh, she, why is she standing on ceremony? She should come visit you and the grandchildren. We're here. Of course. You see, I'm what? not angry with her. It's cool. Yes, you are. I'm not. How would I? I'm I, honestly. Yeah, I'm angry at a lot of motherfuckers. Who are you angry with? <laughs> I'm angry at the machine, goddammit. <laughs> I want to get inside that motherfucker. <laughs> I want to start pushing buttons and pulling levers. There's a lot of things I want to change, and I'm angry at. And that's my rage. That's what will keep me. You know what I'm saying? But little shit like Mel Gibson saying this and that, I don't. Nah, I don't feed into that bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Right. There's a lot of other things like oil in the fucking water that we could be dealing with. Right. I, I could be, I'm, in, I'm angry at Lindsay Lohan. What the fuck is she getting all this fucking press about? Right. You been to jail? I was, yeah, what the fuck? I ain't getting no press. <laughs> I was on the Lindsay Lohan program. <laughs> sure the fuck work. I got to share the tube with Snooki? Oh, You're not kidding. I'm goodness. fucking, I'm skilled. <laughs> I got skills. You got to go. I'm to- angry at a lot of shit. Yeah, you Why, will. Where's my next fucking movie? Right. And no. Hollywood, wake the fuck up. You I'm here. I'm role? on a cover of GQ. You are. Yeah, I did a movie. I, I did a movie at the beginning of the summer with Al Pacino. Man. Yeah. Al Pacino blew my back out. Well, then how is Shot it? Shot the shit out of me. Really? What does that mean? I fall, off, I fall off a roof. I, I'm in a drama. I'm what? in a drama called um, No One's Son with Channing Tatum and Ray Liotta and Al Pacino and I get shot. When and is this fucking m- awesome. You should see me die. When is this movie coming out? I don't know when is it coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, but it was just at the Cannes Film Festival. Did you learn anything from Al Pacino? I mean, this is one of the greatest what? actors of all time. Did what? you learn anything from Al Pacino? Hell yeah. He what said, did you learn? find your inspiration. Is that what he said, really? He said, everything you fucking learn... When you when you when it's time to do the shit, forget it. Well, and just find inspiration. Everything you train for, when it comes to do the actual act, forget it. And just find inspiration. I don't understand mm. that. You gotta find your inspiration. That doesn't well, mean a thing to you me. You gotta be inspired. To get up and come to this motherfucking job every day. You're inspired, Howard. You know we love you. And forget what you've learned? Yeah, I mean, it's like a dancer. He said dancers, so what ballet you're... dancers, they train, they learn their routine. But the day of the show, they have to forget all of that shit and just find inspiration. What is your inspiration? Oh, man. Um, your mom's? I, I find inspiration in all kind of shit, man. I find inspiration in the motherfuckers telling me I couldn't do it. Good. Motherfuckers telling me I, I would never see the president. I find inspiration in people saying that me and Robin will never get together. But you will. Yeah, you yeah, know absolutely. I'm going pregnant because you know I'm old school. I don't be pulling out, man. You I don't came. be pulling out. I, that's my baby. I would get Robin you know what your so is? fucking pregnant. She'd be by, 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 with a fucking, with the paternity gown on and everything. Man. And when she had my daughter, oh, I am just be standing there watching her breastfeed and everything. You could get That'd Robin pregnant? That'd be my fucking baby right there. You think you could get Robin pregnant? Hell fucking yeah, man. I could fill up with like a half half of that cup. I could fill up with my jizz. <laughs> a jizz, B. Yeah, you're the man. What? You're the man. Oh, my God. That's my baby. She, her smile. You have to go see. That's a fine chocolate see. motherfucker right there. As my father would say, that's a fine motherfucker. That ain't a, that ain't a gorgeous <laughs> woman. That's a fine motherfucker. And she got the crazy big badonka dong. When <laughs> Yo, y'all, when, out there, when, y'all out there in the Howard world, y'all should see what I see. Y'all don't, you don't even know how many times I've masturbated to Robin, oh, man. Is that true? You don't know what. Is that when, true? I, when I was at fucking Saturday Night Live, I was a douchebag. Me and Norm McDonald were douchebag. <laughs> we were fucking superheroes. We were bump physical. One of the twin powers activated. Form of two douchebags. I, uh, One of we, yo, I'm going to tell you something. After every pitch meeting, there was a line outside the bathroom where I was masturbating so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hey, who was I, they would see me go in the bathroom with my magazine. A brewer tells us a great story. I beat my dick to every fucking in every bathroom in Thirty Rock. Brewer told us a great story what about he you. He was talking about how you, Colin uh, Quinn, you, I Colin Quinn, and Brewer raped Will Ferrell. Every day, <laughs> every day. It drove you guys nuts that Will every Ferrell. Every day he would walk in the office, in our office. He would walk in our office, and we would just go right into character like we was gay, like in prison. <laughs> And he would come in there, Will would come in there, like, unbeknownst to him, and we just start fucking raping him, me, Colin, every, all well, the fucking time. The idea was you guys were angry <laughs> that Will was always in character. Every we raped him. And he was him. playing a gay character, and you guys said, you know what, let's see you stay in character when we rape your ass. <laughs> we raped his asshole. And Brewer described that you're always the guy at the door going, save some of that for me. 
Yeah, I'm looking out with the we got my do rag on. I'm looking out while they fucking rape with him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got to go see Tracy Morgan tonight through Sunday. This is a rare opportunity. Ah. He is going to be at Caroline's. You know I love being on your show because you dig deep, man. I love it. You be getting shit out of me. He's like my Dr. Phil, man. I come in. I hang I out with it. you. I love when you come in. It's uh, like therapy for me coming to see Howard Stern, man. A lot of motherfuckers run for the border, man, but I love it. Hey, how's your son dealing with uh, this hot Who, girl? Trey? How's he dealing with this hot girlfriend of yours? It must Trey be confusing. Chilling. Yo, man, he's she 19. Running around. She's, she's running around. She's probably blue in his butthole. I think she licked his butthole because his logic is off. <laughs> yeah, twisted sense of logic, so I think she tossed the salad. Motherfucker can't do shit right. Yo, yo, let me tell you how good pussy is, man. Right. That should make you go against your parents. You know what? Adam did against God. Right. Eve gave him that motherfucking that twist. And it was a rat. Do you he ever said, make me some fruit salad, this fruit cocktail? Would you ever allow a reality show of your life to be taped with you and your kids? No would you way. ever go that way? I don't think America's ready. You don't think America could handle it? They would have to give me a bunch of money. I would have to get Howard Stern money. Big money. Big fucking then money. you'd open up the door. Hey, yo, I got some black chicks that want to want to go down on you, bro. No kidding. Yeah, it takes I a village, man. Yo, man, it takes a village. I'm way into that Remy mom. Well, when does that come up? You're walking around, you're sitting around, and all of a sudden. Yo, let me tell you something, Robin. Most of my most of my fans love fucking Howard. When yeah. I, they say, yo, Hot you black chicks. Howard, when you on Howard. We, that's the Robin, remember when I was coming on to Remy Ma? Yes. I almost, oh, yeah, I almost yeah, had yeah. it. Almost. She what wanted the, you, what I was think. The, what was the hurdle? What was the dilemma? I don't know. I think she was tied up with someone else. <laughs> remember? She you was almost had Remy yeah, Ma? Yeah, that's, well, that's sort of she could put you. it on you, man. I came on to her. Nothing happened. Yeah. You like that nappy you. dugout. Oh, you I like love the nappy it. dugout. I love you. know, listen, I grew up in a black neighborhood. I tried many times with the girls, and the sisters would all say to me, I can't fuck you. I can't have sex with you. I can't even be your girlfriend because I'll get with a shit beat out of me. I was the only white guy. Yo, so it's taboo, I wanted dude. These. They couldn't bring you home, it. motherfucker. So what's the point? I was like, I a had black an Italian man. girl tell me that shit. I can't bring you home. So what's the fucking point? <laughs> I, you know, I want you. Yo, you know what scene on on your in your movie? Remember the the girl with the fucking knockwish? Yes. Yeah. The boss is queen. Yeah. Did that really happened. You uh, saw it right there. That wasn't it. CGI. No, that's no CGI. That's no <laughs> special effects. She can do wow, it. Wow, yeah. women are women are fucking. Oh man, they're crazy. Women, women go up. They they could take it. They sure can. They could take it. Tracy, you're a, a great guy. You know, I always wish you a lot of success. And I'm telling people, when are you coming to see me? I'm perform well, and when am I going to have dinner with you soon you have dinner with Chris Rock but I no, can't get it no have dinner I with didn't Chris, Rock. Chris Rock stood me up I had it with Spade so why the fuck I wouldn't have stood you up let me tell you something Adam Sandler was just in town Rock Spade did they invite you to dinner you're a Saturday Night Live alumni and you work with Chris that's right why no, didn't I these didn't guys invite, they didn't invite you to dinner I didn't get it right. It. I don't it hurts. think. I think. I know it doesn't hurt. I just think that it was. I was. I'm not a part of that generation there. No, oh, please. Sure you are. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not. But I don't. I, you know, I don't. I don't know. All right. Listen to me. Uh, the important thing. The reason you're here. Let's get. Let, let's get down to it. Tracy's going to be at Caroline's on Broadway. This is a great room to see Tracy. It's where he's most relaxed. He's going to come in there. He's going to tear the room up. Am I correct? Yeah, hell yeah. Right. He's going to go out there. You're going to rocking the night. You're not going to coast. You're not going to just. Uh, you're going to give him everything you have. Well, actually, I'm. I'm gearing up to do a HBO special. Is that Are true? You? Yes. Excellent. We're filming at the Apollo on September 22nd, either the 23rd or the 20 and the 24th. Right. So right now I'm just putting a. The Putting whole it together. Tightening, uh -huh. Yeah, tightening bolts and shit like that. Making sure it all works. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. Uh, tonight through Sunday, Caroline's on Broadway, Manhattan, as Tracy prepares to tighten the bolts. That's what it's called the Tightening of the Bolts Tour. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Tracy Morgan, black and blue. Black and blue tour. Uh, for tickets, go to carolines.com. That's most important. You got to go see Tracy. Tracy, I want to thank you for coming in here. You sat down like a man, you talked about everything. You didn't shy away from any topics. Nah. You'll work with Mel Gibson. And you, and that's the story. Because <laughs> the motherfucker don't ask for a little lot of loot. We, give you, we got five grand for him. That's true. You can get Mel Gibson. You know what? I might you put Mel Gibson in the Christ movie. too. <laughs> Passion of Christ, too. You're right. There you go. Christ in the hood. <laughs> and uh, we will be back right after these words. Thanks, Tracy. I love you, Howard. Love you, Robin. too. Back in, a, back in a flash, as they say. Here we go. Come on, Fred. Make it happen. Who is this? I'm going to fuck you like a wild lamb when I want this. Huh? Uh -huh.
I'm retarded, you jerk! <laughs> you stupid bastard. I'll change topics. Let's go over to Tracy Morgan. How many more minutes do we have? Uh, about <laughs> 10 or 15. But let's talk about Tracy Morgan. We talked about it in the beginning of this show. When Tracy Morgan comes in, you know, you, I mean, you don't have to leave your seat because you can hear him in the hallways. He's loud. He's fun. He said he was talking to medical Pete out in, <laughs> out in the halls. He loves to mix it up. But Tracy Morgan on Sirius with Howard, you're never going to get an interview like that because this is the only place that lets Tracy be Tracy. He's so good on the show. He was, he was, when we booked him on the show the first time, we weren't even sure that we wanted him on. Kimmel said to Howard, you got to have him on. And somebody, uh, 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 Craig Gast did a really good Tracy Morgan impersonation. We didn't even know what that meant. He's so good on the show, and he's been good from the first day he came here. Um, yeah, he's he's sort of a wild card, but y you never know what he's going to say next. But he's funny. He's just very, very funny. And he's got good premises. Like, I love that premise he walked in with this morning, but I just moved to the city, and uh, I went to a porn shop, and there's people in there with baskets like they're shopping, you know. <laughs> That's just a funny idea. What? How pissed do you think he was at Benji for what Benji pulled on him? I couldn't tell. Do you think that? Do you think he was annoyed? Yes, I do. I think he got the joke, but he at the, at the moment, if you watch that tape, he was pissed. Didn't you think so, Will? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, every time Benji pulls one of those stunts, like people look like they want to punch him right in the head. So Tracy was no different. And I'm I'm always surprised that someone hasn't. I me too. Benji I'm really shocked. Put, Benji really puts himself out there a lot of times. Like, you know, you know, I was thinking about like when he started beating those people up with a pillow. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> like at some point I thought somebody just put down the pillow and punch him in the face. Well, how about the uh, people screaming for peace and then they stopped <laughs> what and about, Benji and Benji just kept screaming for What minutes. about what about the poetry slam that he oh, did? Oh, so many. <laughs> now when <laughs> When Tracy started talking about Mel Gibson, he said a couple. One, he said he'd be more than willing to work with him if the, you know, if the price was right. But he also said that it's white people who are upset over Mel Gibson using the N word and not black people. What did you think of that? I disagree with that. I think. I mean, you just hear white people yelling. You think black people don't care? Is that what he was saying? I, I think they do, but yeah, he was like, I mean, what did he say? It's hip hop, I believe he said, or something. Well, Jesse Jackson, when it, when it, before the tapes even came out, the transcript, uh, you know, Jesse Jackson won an apology. So, one of the few times Jesse Jackson's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at this point, though, it's like so over the top that people almost don't take him seriously right. that they're just right. willing to laugh at it. Right, he has no credibility. Left. Right, it's just. Well, uh, Tracy's just one of those guys. I mean, the second he walks through the door, he's fucking funny. He, he is. Just, he, he doesn't even need a mic. He doesn't need a camera. The guy just walked in. First thing he says, I love this show. Wish it was on in the nighttime. I'm tired. You know, and well, he's walking around. And, and I, I mean, as soon as we cut off the mics, the segment was over. He did a 10-minute rant yeah. in the studio I that was funnier than anything he said during the, the interview. It, it was, was unbelievable. So, it was so weird because Howard talked about it. He just He got, like, sort of brutally honest. But also just as funny as he was, and we stood there. It wasn't even like we asked him questions. No, he just started to talk, and he goes, "You know what I mean, Howard?" And then he just would keep going and going, and it was really, really interesting, but funnier than anything he'd ever done. Maybe because maybe for us, because it's so real that it's when it's funny and real, it's the best. You know, the, the best balls of the guy to, to like because if you ever see him live, like doing stand up, like. Uh, having done comedy, I can I can see when he's just trying something. Like he's just talking off the top of his head, and not only is it funny, he kills with it. So kills is, with. I've it. never seen his act. Um, is, if you go to see his act, is it uh, sort of free form, or is it is it a standard act? And then he throws. Shit no, in? it's definitely not standard. I would say it's more free form, and and it's Love just that. hilarious from start to finish. And there's some people that go in there not knowing what to expect from Tracy, you know, and, and it's a real rude awakening for them. But he's just, he's brilliant, man. He's like Godzilla on stage. Joe in Baltimore, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on? You know, I actually got to see uh, Tracy uh, probably a couple years ago, and just like Shuni was saying, he is, uh, he is awesome. And, and, you know, a lot of it is improv, and he's just hilarious. I mean, he did uh, 25 minutes. Of some of the funniest stuff ever, and he just he just went to different topics the whole time. But uh, you know, speaking about Tracy, you know, he's one of the few people that actually challenged uh, you know Rob, uh, you know Howard and Robin, you know, saying you know about uh, the whole Will Smith, you know, you know that's his kid, you know, and, you know if if Jason wants to be a movie, then you know why shouldn't his celebrity father be behind him? And you know, I, I actually agreed with him there. Yeah, I don't think Joe. I don't think he challenged him so much as he just flat out disagreed with him. I don't know that that's a challenge, but I know what you're saying. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I just think that, you know, you know, and, and listen, I've listened to Howard since like '91, you know, and I agree with some things, but sometimes, you know, I think Howard, he needs to see the the other point of view, and I think that's what Tracy did there, you know, and just told him, you know, I mean, and you know, if a kid's gonna be, you know, in the business, why not have someone like Will and uh, and Jada, who's, you know done it all in, in show business, why not have them behind it? You know, I just thought of that. And, and one more thing, Baba Booey, thank you for putting me on the scope, man. I think I'm addicted like you. And, <laughs> and, and I, actually, I actually did the Howard Stern uh, uh, game on on there, and I got everyone right except for uh, High Pitch Mike. I, for some <laughs> reason, I just couldn't, uh, I, I went blank with him. Uh, Sporkle's definitely a phase. I mean, I'll still do it from time to time, but but when you first get on it, it's it's you can almost do nothing else, and then after you sort of flatline a little bit, you go to it from time to time. All right, Joe, thank you for calling in. Let's talk to Jamie in Massachusetts. Jamie, you're on the wrap up show. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Um, I didn't know Tracy Morgan from a hole in the wall until I seen that movie he was in with Adam Sandler, The Longest Yard. He's not in that, is he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah you, okay. You, either you have to be totally 100% so gay or a great actor to play this part. You played a, a gay inmate that wanted uh, Adam Sandler so bad, you know? And I'm like, wow, I cannot believe uh, anyone to be that gay. And uh, <laughs> he can pull it off. He can pull it off. He, he was the best. Freaking! I, I I like this guy. I see then after that I seen him in other other things too. But uh, did you he, like him? He, did you like him in his non-gay roles? There's yeah, a non-gay I mean, role he did for VH1. John, you probably know the movie. It was like an '80s. Uh, it was like a parody of of uh, the '80s, and it was Tracy Morgan. Chris Kattan was in it. Uh, it was set in like high school, and Tracy Morgan played this uh, this black guy from the A's, and he had the huge like Harry Carey bifocals on, <laughs> and the Kango hat, and and just the references and the style and the shit he was talking. I mean, it made that whole movie hilarious. And he's so, funny as hell on Thirty Rock if you if yeah. you watch that show. I, and again, I think that I'm trying to figure out if they're taking shit from his real life and trying to put it in the script, or if they're mocking his real life. To, you know, because it, it you, you so most of the plot lines on that show, you can't tell whether it's Tracy Morgan or Tracy Jordan. Right. I think it's a combination of both. And when he got to go to the White House, he admitted to Howard. He he teared up when he got See, to meet the president. I thought that was really that seemed very genuine. I kept waiting for the joke, the punchline. It sort of didn't come. The funniest thing he said was when he asked Colin Powell if he could tell everyone, <laughs> you're, "You're my real father." Uh, the, show, the movie's <laughs> called VH1. It's totally awesome. I don't remember that, but it's funny. Check it out. It sounds good. He's great. Would uh, when you met Clinton, did you uh, get choked up at all? <laughs> no, but I told you, I didn't get choked up. But I got I I turned into a fucking like a like a chick. I say I, I tell the story all the time. I'm you like what? No, but I tell the story. <laughs> yeah, at least I can. Um, oh. <laughs> I wasn't even necessarily making wow. a joke about you, Gary. One time he opened his mouth and yeah. he bumped it right through his heart. Uh -huh. no, I, when I met Clinton, I said to my, I said before I met him, I'm like, you know what? I met Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've met Mickey Mantle. I'm trying to think of like like super A level people that I've met. And okay, I've never met a president. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. And I'm like, you know, I've been down this road before. Like, it'll be really cool to meet them, but like, I can handle it. I said he walks into the room. He puts his left hand on your shoulder, and his right hand, he grabs your hand to shake it. And when he did that, I was like a chick. My, I would have blown him. <laughs> <laughs> my knees buckled, and he goes, Ooh. he goes, ha, ah, Bill, very nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, my God, really? It's like electricity goes through your body. I can't explain it. It's so stupid. <laughs> have you ever felt that way meeting anybody else besides him? No, there's something very – listen, he was president for eight years. I voted for him twice. I agreed with a lot of the stuff that he did. He's very charismatic. Yeah, he's. I don't know what I would do. How about you? Did you ever get choked up like that? Mean anybody? Uh, I was excited to meet Maurice Jones Drew yesterday. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell? The, well, why don't you tell the truth? The, what the time you got choked up when you met somebody? Oh, and that, you, that Chad Pennington story you love to tell. <laughs> I think I choked up over Chad Pennington. Oh my god! I would love to meet Donovan McNabb. I really. I think I would get a little giddy if I met him. Even as a Redskin. Well, you know, I went to Syracuse no with the guy, and then hey, we had some great years at Eagles. Yeah, I would love to meet Don McNabb. I'm trying to think of who I would meet that would make me Easy cry. Easy, Bengals. Hey.
Get Who'd you get choked up meeting? Huh? I don't know. I haven't. I can't think of anyone. Really. I, There's no one you've met, and you were like, oh, I don't really met. I even met Quentin Tarantino, and it was really. I mean, I didn't. What? I, I don't get emotional like that. Maybe what, when you meet what, your mom. Hey, when was the last time you cried? That was hilarious. JD. What? <laughs> when was the last time you cried? Um, like a hard, hard oh, cry. I know. I heard. Well, I'm uh, my grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother's okay. dad. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. Cause you, sometimes you seem a little detached. So you, uh, you yeah. Seem... I mean, I, I I held it pretty good until there were a couple moments at the funeral, but you know. I'm sorry to hear that. I uh, didn't mean to bring that up. <laughs> when you got that text message Thanks from for that. Uh, the speed dating chick. <laughs> yeah, from Andy, I cried a little <laughs> bit. Thanks for bringing the show down, Buzz Killington. <laughs> hey, hey, you ass. Hang in there, JD. Time to wrap up the wrap up Last show. Time I come in. Will Murray, anything you want to plug? It's over for the Phil, so I'm now a Reds fan. <laughs> Are you giving up on the Phil's? There's seven games out. The staff is a mess. I don't know. It doesn't look good. We'll try to get out of a bet. Which yeah, kind of desperately. Gary, hey, the Mets are a half game better than the Phil's. So. <laughs> JD, go Reds. Surely. Uh, next Thursday, July 29th, we're going to be at Caroline's Miserable Men Comedy Tour. Go to uh, miserablemen.com. Tonight, seven o'clock. Hour 101 Super Fan Roundtable. Talking about. Oh, and Tracy Morgan is hosting Best of the Week this week. Thanks for listening to the wrap up show on Hour 100. Who is this? Cash app, dollar sign, milk, crate, marauder. Uh-huh. Venmo, at, milk, crate, marauder. <laughs> you stupid bastard. I'm a death, cocksucker!